Grant in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. So she's, uh, uh, but she also wants to, uh, you know, thank everyone on her campus, you know, for, for stepping up and helping uh, her to exceed her goal and be part of the, uh, the, uh, the team. And one of the th th neat things I'm looking at here, $7,432 yeah. to be exact. Let's mm -hmm. round it up to $7,500 is basically everybody is within – of the individual people raising money, they're all yep. within a couple hundred dollars. Absolutely. So it's not, yep. you know, somebody might think, well, sure, everybody's going to support the president. He probably raised 7000 of that. Right. Not the case. Yeah. No. All of these folks have raised in excess of $1,500 exactly. individually. Yeah. And just and then there was $125 of team donations where somebody yeah. just wrote a check to you guys that yep. came to us and yep. said, hey, let's just put this toward the team. Yeah. So just a yeah. phenomenal outpouring yeah. of support. That's the, that's Dr. Reggie Chandler yeah, he, there. He's he discussing was, uh, the mechanics <laughs> of that right yeah, now. That's right. He's about about the, physics. Putting together there. of that thing. <laughs> looks very calm. He does. Uh, as he looks over the edge there. And, and Reggie is a, is a great story. Uh, I mean, he finished in the top ten individual fundraiser, so a major contributor to the team effort there. But uh, And he did that through uh, a lot of the, uh, the support from not just uh, his faculty and staff there at the Terry campus in Dover, right. uh, but a lot of students, whether it be selling Krispy Kreme donuts <laughs> or, or water ice. Uh, and he was... Uh, um, very enthusiastic, obviously, right. uh, as you could tell by the results there. But he, he looks very calm. He does. He looks like he's having a great time. He may not want to go over just because he's having a good time sitting there at the top. He's the father of four. He looks great for oh, a father yeah. of four. <laughs> he sure does. I got three kids. I got gray hair. Hey, right, I, yeah. I, I'm sore every morning I get out of bed playing with my kids, but he looks great. Absolutely. He's a pastor of a, of a church, the Liberating Power AME Zion Church in Bridgeville, mm -hmm. according to this. And uh, father of four, as I mentioned, and... You mentioned some of his fundraising supporters, the key ones I think that he wanted to get out there, Dr. Brainer, Dr. Taransky, John Buckley, Bill Morrow, Jennifer Priest, Jeff Hall, uh, and then a host of other people. Mm -hmm. And, and we're actually, what's, those were the individuals and then some uh, uh, people, some organizations as a whole. So mm -hmm. he's getting ready to step up and go over it. Jerry, do you need to go? I don't want to hold no, you up. I'm, you're I'm good. fine All right. here. You're well, going to see a lot of people in the crowd from Delaware Tech great, uh, there great. as they... Uh, hit the ground oh super yeah, yeah we don't use that term <laughs> yeah, right. we don't use, we don't say smash hit the ground fall exactly. uh, face first i'm with you drop, on that. any of those things now i was going to ask you you did this event mm -hmm. once uh just once just yes. once mm -hmm. last year i did it with my son michael that's right that's yes. right i remember your other son right and um what we're watching uh as they get up on oh, the roof money. is they are all getting ready to uh, make that step back, mm -hmm. which you've experienced. Exactly. That's the worst yeah, part. That Do you is, agree? Without a doubt. I mean, you, you're you not thinking much about it till you get up on the roof number <laughs> one there. And you're still a little queasy, but they do a nice job of preparing you uh, there. And, uh, of course, there's Virginia. Yep. Uh, and... Uh, the only uh, iffy part of the whole thing uh, in terms of when you start questioning your own sanity about why, <laughs> what was I thinking when I raised my hand there was when you step on that ledge and you could see Reggie's feet and Virginia's feet. My feet were more like Virginia's shaking a little bit there. Um, and it just, just pretty much uh, trust the equipment wow. is, is all you can do. You saw the uh, uh, Action News logo there. <laughs> so yes, they're there. Did. They'll get a picture of some of your guys coming down. I know they're also here to see Chief Bobby Cummings and mm -hmm. a lot of media support for this type of event. Yep. Uh, radio, TV, newspaper, uh, the TD Bank logo there, or the mascot. They're yep. hosting a little party outside. If you're in the yep. area, come on by. Uh, you know, if you're watching this in an office building nearby, uh, I'd tell you it's worth the trip, as you can see uh, him making that first step back. Yep. Now, let me ask you this, Jerry. That, this year, they have two options. You can either go the way he's going, which is the way, has the traditional way. It's how right. you went over. It's yep. how I went over. Right. The other option is you can sit with your feet over the edge, facing out, right, and then kind of push yourself off. Oh, okay. I'd have no interest in doing that. No, it? no, I, I, I totally agree, John. <laughs> I don't want to see I, where I'm going until I'm already out. <laughs> I, would, I like the path that we both you and I took yeah. and, and Reggie and Virginia is taking here now. So. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure Virginia's like, what was I thinking? Right, yeah. Although she's uh, already at, she's, yeah. she's, she's, she's at she's the, the point where you're, you're <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going. <laughs> yeah, at the point of no return. Yep. There. So, I mean, it, she's trying to think, what was this this versus all the marathons she's running? That's right. Uh, you know, I bet her heart's racing faster right now than any of the yeah. marathons. Now, now we, we always, uh, you know, we, we, we realize people bounce in and out of this broadcast, and you can see oh, what gosh. she is trying to do. She's using her left hand on the lever, yep. and basically you control your own speed. Mm -hmm. The, the more you pull on that lever, the faster you will go, but exactly. you have to pull on it. So if you don't pull yep. on it, and, and I can tell you, based on 
six years ago when we first started doing this, the mechanism they used took a lot of effort out of your forearm. And you, right. don't, you didn't it. do it then, I didn't do it then, but right. the stories I hear are mm -hmm. the case. This is a piece of cake. As right. You, you, know, yeah, you just gently pull yeah. on it and you yeah. go. And if you go too fast, you lock up. Right. Um, they're over that first ledge, which Jimmy, uh, my broadcast partner today, has talked about appears to be the big step like right. it's one thing once you're going and then you get over that step right. and now it's nothing but glass yep. on the way down to do that yeah. so uh, there's the folks that uh, some Delaware Tech people there I'm sure in that crowd as you mentioned you can see some Special Olympics athletes the TD Bank mascot that is the scene folks yes. here at 300 Delaware Avenue building and it's going to be crowded like that for the next several hours that's just the way this event works people come out to see people uh, they hang around TD Bank's got a very festive atmosphere outside. There's a DJ playing music, making announcements. They've got giveaways. You can see somebody with a TD Bank ball there. Uh, they're going to have some free food available later on during the day. And so a lot going on outside. And you can see the traffic out there, people kind of slowing down and stopping, watching what's going on upstairs. So, uh, Jerry, I'm going to let you head out to okay. talk to your colleagues and okay. folks. And uh, is there anything else you wanted to add no, before I you head just, out? Uh, once again, uh, you know, on behalf of – of uh, Virginia and Reggie and, and Monique and, and Mark, uh, just thanking uh, the entire Delaware Tech community for, for supporting their cause, making them the number one team. Uh, and uh, just, they, they, I know these four can't thank them all enough. So well, thank I, you very much, John, to you and Ann and, and everything you all do to help our family. Uh, well, you know, through Michael. And, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and, and it is for the athletes, whether you're somebody who's going down the side of the building or whether you've supported somebody who is going down the side of the building. And sure. there's nothing that tells our story better than our athletes, which Phil Saxon did, a Hall of Fame athlete last night at the cocktail reception, right. uh, as you just so eloquently yeah. talked about what this program has meant to your family. And yeah. so thank you oh, for thanks, all your John. support. And thanks to Dell Tech okay. for doing a wonderful job. $7,500 raised by these four folks, uh, Mark, Dominique, Virginia, and RJ, uh, who are part of the Dell Tech 50th anniversary celebration. Uh, and Jerry McNesby is going to head it back outside and uh, talk to some of the folks that just landed. He, a veteran repeller himself. So he's not somebody who tried to encourage these folks to do it, who wasn't willing to do it himself. He has done it himself as well. So we appreciate him stopping by here. Joe from WSDW. Joe Allen just uh, tweeted out, everyone should do this at least once from Joe Allen. He's done it twice. That's right. Uh, there. So, Jimmy, uh, great. You know, what an effort by Dell Tech. $7,500. Uh, talk about getting a, a, a school involved. And, you know, money aside, and we always talk about yep. this in Special Olympics, awareness is great. Money's great. Uh, or money's great. Awareness is better. Because right. that's the future of Special Olympics, uh, to keep an organization going. And if you don't bring in new blood, eventually – things start to fizzle and we talk about that in all of the things that we do as you see RJ Chandler on the left there and Virginia Stasinski on the right both employees of Delaware Tech. Yeah your uh, awareness here is as we heard that they're watching from all over on all the campuses is it's exactly what you're looking for I mean top razor as a group yep. but also great community expansion and network expansion by having all those eyeballs on, on your organization right now, which is huge. And my guess is somebody watching right now, and, and 241 people at last count were yeah, literally we're watching at a time. 248 right now. 248, yeah. literally watching this broadcast right now. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is the Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics. Delaware sponsored by TD Bank, Brandywine Realty Trust, and the Newcastle County Fire Service. Supporters include Delaware Law Enforcement for Special Olympics, Sheridan Suites, Wilmington Downtown, and Delmarva Broadcasting Company. 87 people over these two days are going to have gone over the edge. That's going to bring the total to about 530 people who have done this over six years. More than $725,000 is going to be raised when it's all said and done, including the $7,500 that these four folks from Delaware Tech have raised, as you can see, Virginia finishing up there. RJ has landed. He looks just as calm as he did when he started at the top. As we follow the pan up there, you get a sense. There she is, Virginia coming down. You you get a sense. And, it, you know, people tell me all the time when they arrive, Jimmy, and they've never, you know, I had the opportunity when I went over last year. I had been to this event for four times. I had spent two of those right. events outside MC looking straight up. I'd been on the roof. Uh, this was the opportunity for me to actually go down, and it wasn't as intimidating because I'd seen it. 
a lot of people uh, showed up. Marie McIntosh was one of them. She'd never seen this building. She arrived, looked straight up, and said, oh, my God, what have yeah. I gotten myself into? But she was the first one we talked to and the first one to say, I'll be back next year. She can't wait. So uh, it is amazing to me. And, and we've talked to the over-the-edge people, and they have said that we have one of the highest repeat customer rates, we call it, uh, in the country. Uh, for the number of people that come back year after year after year. And that in a lot of other places, it's, okay, I did this, I'm going to go do something else now. Yeah, and I think, too, you know, in the region, in the state, as you mentioned, this is it. So if you want to do this, this is where you do it. And so I think that really you cornered the market, Mr. Busby. <laughs> Uh, there are other nonprofits from around the area, not here in Delaware, uh, who are visiting today, three of them who are looking into the uh, prospects of what it, what it is to put on an event like this, the effort that it takes. Uh, and I'm not talking about the broadcast here, yeah, uh, right. which is a tremendous effort. I'm just <laughs> talking about the uh, what you do leading up to recruit the people, how you handle them, and uh, that type of thing. And uh, the, the Special Olympics Delaware staff here uh, always make sure that the number one priority is the folks that we are catering to, which are the people that are out raising the $1,100 minimum uh, for to get the opportunity to do this. You see a pose there with uh, Virginia, and I'm going to assume those are her two boys who are glad that she has landed. I remember when I did this last year, Jimmy, uh, one of my, uh, my kids were outside watching, and they were glad when I landed. You know, <laughs> we, we never talked about uh, you know, what I was doing necessarily, but uh, they were certainly glad when I landed. It looks like we've got two more people on deck. Yeah, waiting to see who those, who those are. And as of right now, uh, those that are into analytics or data, 1,174 people have tuned into wow. the broadcast so far today. Uh, that is uh, unique individuals. And, so that's and that's wonderful. way more, I mean, than this think, time of any other broadcast. I think we get to about five by the end, if, right. I, if I, my memory serves me correct. And I can dig up uh, the analytics through... Um, the Ustream dashboard, but 227 people are watching right this moment, and 100, uh, 1,177 people have tuned in uh, so far, and it's 11 o'clock, so yeah. we're only two hours in, which and, is great. And, and people aren't going to sit and w listen to us no. for eight hours. I, we know I that. I hope not. No, right. <laughs> uh, and, and so that, you know, we realize that, and that's why, you know, for some reason you are tuned in for half an hour and we repeat something. That's why it yep. is, because people are going to be bouncing in and out of the broadcast, or actually probably in and then out for the day. Yep. Uh, they're, they're on to see somebody go down. And they, they're tuning in and uh, coming up at some point, and, and we don't want to say who these people are yet. We're waiting to get the official confirmation, but we're waiting for Faye Adcox, Annette Messina, Richard Arroyo, Bobby Cummings. Well, I can tell you it's not Richard and Bobby, so I'm going to go out on a limb here, so to speak, no pun intended there, and say that Faye Adcox is one of these folks and Annette Messina is the other. Once they have them hooked in, what the process is, is uh, once they are officially on the ledge and ready to go, Corinne Plummer from our staff, who just walked through the door perfectly on cue, comes in and lets us know who is who coming down. Did I get it right, Jim? You had it right. Oh, Faye right. Adcox is on the blue, and Annette Messina is on the yellow. All right, so Faye Adcox on the blue, and Annette on the yellow, let's tell you a little bit about these folks. Faye is doing this for the second year. Now, now here's a story, and I'm only sharing it because uh, she, she knows we were going to share their stories. And she did it in 2014 and was supposed to do it last year. Uh, this is uh, Faye Adcox. Again, Jimmy, is she on the left or the right there? She's on the blue. Faye, Adco uh, Faye Adcox is on the blue. So she's on the left. She's on the shot. left. Yep. So Faye in the purple shirt on the left there. She was in a near-fatal car accident oh, wow. last year in February, two months before this event, and was not able to do it. So she said she watched, watched us, listened to us, watched us from her wheelchair on the Internet uh, as her friend repelled the friend she was supposed to go with, and she promised her friend if she was able to walk. This is Faye Adcox. Uh, that is not Faye right there. That is Annette. Uh, but Faye, who uh, promised that she, her friend that she would go over with her this year, and she's doing that. And uh, she's done Tough Mudder races. She does the Polar Bear Plunge, and she's done Savage races. So it sounds like this is probably the most daring thing she's done and is doing it for the second time. Annette, who just disappeared over the building there, and that is Annette on your left. Faye on your right, she has made that uh, trip over the edge there on the right. Uh, but Annette is a repeat edger. Uh, it's, when asked if she's done any other crazy activities, she says, I don't do daring things. Well, you do now, and or you've done before, because she is uh, a repeat. She's employed at 
Faye Health. Faye is employed at Wilkinson's Marketing Services Incorporated. Annette would like to thank her biggest fundraising supporter, Dr. Norman Stewart, saying you truly have a heart of gold, and Fordham Brewery for helping her promote her fundraising efforts for Special Olympics Delaware. We just got a tweet from Dave Morris, so proud of Dr. Mark Brainerd and the Delaware Tech team for scaling down a skyscraper this morning for Special Olympics. Dr. Brainerd himself uh, tweeted out just uh, letting people know that Reggie and Virginia were going down. Uh, which they did a couple minutes ago. They have landed. All the Delaware Tech folks are safely on the ground. Annette Messina and Faye Adcox on the building right now. 300 Delaware Avenue building is 17 stories, 222 feet. 87 people will go over by the end of the day. Actually, it will probably be 86. We did have someone uh, who was not able to make it at the last minute, so it will end up being 86 when we are all said and done here. They each raised $1,100 for Special Olympics Delaware. Many of them went above and beyond raising the $1,100. I'm John Busby along with Jimmy Smith. I am a member of the Special Olympics Delaware staff. Jimmy is the head of the production crew here for this event, uh, being live streamed for the third consecutive year. The crew we have here is a mix of uh, members of his staff at the University of Delaware that do this type of stuff for games and other events all the time. If you haven't checked their stuff out, you should at bluehens.com, whether it's a radio piece or a PSA or a commercial. They do funny stuff. They do serious stuff. They do games. They were actually nominated for an Emmy Award earlier this year. Uh, just an incredible job his crew does. And the list of where the students that he supervises as part of an internship have gone is unbelievable. We talked a little bit about that already. And it, uh, just so impressive what these kids are able to learn under Jimmy and then go on. And Jimmy is a father for uh, yeah. something different from last year. He had a little girl, uh, Lila, right? Yep, Lila, Lila, March 30th. March 30th. So uh, he's experienced the uh, joy of being a father and, and what it's like not to sleep through the night. Yeah. Uh, and that'll, I mean, that'll I, I have eventually. to say my, my wife um, left work and is taking care of the baby for the rest of the year, maybe longer. She's been taking care of this, so I can't take too, I can't <laughs> we'll, take too we'll much. We'll give credit, credit where credit is due. <laughs> yes. Um, but still, I mean, when she cries, you hear it. And yep. So, uh, that's, that's, that was always my argument. Yep. I may not have gotten up, but let me tell you, I, I was heard. awake. <laughs> yep. I'm glad to hear somebody else uses <laughs> yeah. that, and it actually works. Well, no, it doesn't work, okay. but yeah, <laughs> I used right. it anyway. So uh, anyway, there you see uh, Faye Adcox coming down, a repeat edger, and uh, Annette who is on the left. She is also a repeat, repeat edger. Neither one of them have done anything overly daring, uh, but you know, tough mutters, polar bear plungers, savage races, certainly challenging. Uh, yeah. So maybe daring is not the word, but certainly challenging. I've never done uh, any of those other events that we just talked about there. You see the Dell, uh, Dell Tech and the TD Bank employees down there, uh, festival outside. You can see uh, it looks like Channel 6. Yeah, Action ABC News. 6 was here is here. Uh, coming up is going to be, we don't know whether they'll be next, but coming up soon are going to be uh, Chief Arroyo of the Delaware River and Bay Authority Police Department and Chief Bobby Cummings of the Wilmington Police Department. They will be coming up soon as well. So we are basically right on time, maybe about 10 minutes behind schedule as the Chiefs are scheduled to go at 11 o'clock. Uh, as you can see there, Faye has landed to the tune of We Are the Champion song, and this is the one that Annette, Annette uh, was asked about and you know I, Jimmy when I did this last year there wasn't the crowd at the bottom yeah uh, two reasons one <laughs> I'm not that popular and two it was on media day yeah. uh, obviously I couldn't do it on the day that we're broadcasting so you know I always ask people when can you hear the music when do you hear the announcer and they usually say about halfway down right. um, and, and that could be a combination of you're so nervous at the top you don't know what else is going on you're not thinking about what you can actually hear um, but obviously the you know the sp the way the sound has to travel up the building and, and probably rebounds off the glass probably affects that as well as you yeah, see physics to it I guess yeah yeah exactly and so coming down the rest of the way here on that yellow rope. That's Annette Messina. Yep. So we're, uh, again, pretty much on schedule, as we've said. Two and a half hours into our broadcast here with probably another six and a half to go. 87 repellers, 86 actually, as I mentioned, somebody was not able to make it at the last minute. Nine folks went over yesterday. 
They were the media day. We always uh, host the media. We've done that from the beginning. It gives them an opportunity to talk about their experience. They also promote the event leading up to it. Dana McDonald of Cool 101.3, Ashley Reed of Eagle 97.7, Tom Schultz of 97 The Wave, Lauren Holloway from WBOC, DJ McEnany from WDEL, and, of course, Joe Allen, who was just on the air with us, was here with Nancy Johnson, the wake-up crew. Joe went over for the second time. Interesting, he said he was more nervous this time than last time. I thought that yeah. very interesting. Yeah, we've, we've now heard that a couple times where people kind of readjust what they're thinking about when they do it the second time and you are know, worried about maybe the, the holistic thing, but then the second time you're worried about something in particular. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I would imagine being more comfortable the second time around, uh, but comfortable and scared I, I are not mutually exclusive. They, they can't <laughs> both happen at no, the same time. Right, exactly. And I do think, and again, I've never done it twice. I've only done it once. Uh, I, I do think I would still be nervous the second time. Uh, I think until I landed, as Annette yeah. is getting ready to do, I think I would be nervous uh, just because, you know, there is a 100% success rate in this all over North America over eight years, uh, literally thousands of events that they've done and tens of thousands of people that have gone over the side of buildings of all shapes and sizes. Again, this one is 17 stories, 222 feet. We're, we're told by the techs that are part of this and they do these all over. You know, these aren't all, all these folks you see excuse me, on the roof and on the ground uh, are not from Delaware. They fly in or they drive in, uh, but they uh, do these events all over the country, all over North America. And they tell us that this 17-story building is really the perfect size uh, for uh, an event of this type because of the nature of the activity that you're doing. You know, they say if it's a lot shorter, people don't feel as challenged as they yep. do 17 stories. If it's a lot longer, it does become tiresome. And, you know, and, and I can say from experience, if it was a lot longer, there's Chief Bobby Cummings from the Wilmington Police Department uh, going over the edge. He's a member of our law enforcement uh, for Special Olympics Executive Committee. Uh, as I said, I believe he is the first chief who has ever gone over the edge for Special Olympics, and he's going to be joined by another chief, uh, Chief uh, Richard Paroyo from Delaware River, I'm sorry, Arroyo, Richard yep. Arroyo from the Delaware River and Bay Authority will be going over alongside him. They will be going down together. See one of our volunteer photographers on the roof. If you if you want to know where you can see pictures of this event, they will be posted at our picture in our photo galleries at SODE.org. Uh, this live stream will be is being recorded and will be up tomorrow morning, uh, split into three different segments. Jimmy does a very nice job it putting may that be together. Maybe a fourth. Uh, fourth uh, is I, fine, I, right? <laughs> my, my point being, you're not going to have to no, sift through no. uh, nine hours of a broadcast to find the one person you're looking for. Yep. Uh, it'll literally be broken up, basically, for the first couple hours of the morning, mid afternoon, afternoon, and maybe a couple hours later than that. So uh, you can see Chief Bobby Cummings there getting ready to. Uh, go over the edge. Uh, one of the neat things, Jimmy, neat story about uh, Chief Cummings, we were preparing materials for the law enforcement for Special Olympics, the uh, fundraising that they do. One of the things, they're a supporter of this and several other events they're very key in. And one of the things that they do is they solicit advertisers for our annual year in review. Uh, someone being interviewed there, uh, yep. an edger there uh, who just came down. I believe that's Faye. Yep. Uh, getting interviewed by Action News. So if you're listening to this and you were going to hear to support Faye, check out the news later on today. Faye's She'll be got on that as double well. dip in here. She's getting a lot of coverage. So, uh, But anyway, one of the things is Chief Cummings makes that first rappel. Uh, my guess is he's done rappelling of some sort. We'll, we'll find out if we get an opportunity yeah. to, to talk to him, um, whether he's done that or not. But one of the neat things was is he came into our office, and there all of us were, as well as a couple other law enforcement officers, and we literally were circling around our island in the middle of the office and picking up pieces of paper. So we were, in other words, we were putting together packets. Yep. And in comes the chief of police to help us. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was, yeah, no, that was that's pretty neat. For sure. <laughs> that, uh, you know, he, he not only uh, supports the organization by putting his name on things like a committee or whatever uh, doing this repel and and again he is he, and there's Richard Aurora the chief of the uh, Delaware River Bridge and Bay Authority uh, 
Uh, you know, you, you could consider these guys celebrities, and we should, but they also raised $1,100. Right. You know, and that's a, just like our Special Olympics athletes. You know, we want to make that clear that these folks believe in the cause that they are supporting Special Olympics Delaware, 4,000 athletes, children and adults, who train and compete in Special Olympics year-round. And uh, they're supporting that cause. They were out there raising money. And, and it wasn't uh, somebody just writing a check and saying, here, right. I'll support Chief Cummings. Yep. He was out there beating the drums trying to get uh, people to donate money. So uh, we've got a couple of guests coming in. We're going to start with Faye, who just landed, Faye Adcox. And uh, Annette has given us the wave. She's happy just to support us from afar. She's not going to go on the live stream, but if you're tuned in, to you just saw Annette land. Annette, we appreciate you uh, going down and going over the edge and enjoying it. Step a little bit closer there, Faye, so you can get it here. This is your uh, second year, and, and I told your story. And, uh, boy, what a heartwarming, satisfying story uh, that you, uh, you were in a near-fatal accident, as you wrote about in your bio, and that's why I shared it, because you shared it with us, so uh, I assumed it was okay to share it, um, and, and you're back. Yep. And that has to be, you know, that's an experience, obviously, none of us hope we ever have to go through, uh, but when you set the goal to come back, it has to be even more satisfying. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, you went from a wheelchair to coming down the side of a building. Yeah, yeah. Last year I watched her go down because I was supposed to go down with Annette last year mm -hmm. um, in my wheelchair at home live streaming. Yeah. Now I just saw you interviewed by Action News. Mm -hmm. Did you tell that story as well? Yes, I did. Oh, that's that's wonderful because uh, you know those are the types of stories that we want people to hear about. You know, obviously this is the type after what you went through. You know, this is nothing <laughs> compared to that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yet you still raise the money to support yes. Special Olympics. And, 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 you know, why do you do that? What, why is Special Olympics so important to you? Well, I, I just, first of all, I like doing things like this. Uh -huh. uh, anything, I do the polar bear plunges and things yeah, like that. I saw that, that yeah. yeah I, I, Special Olympics is a worthy cause. So that's well, and we appreciate you. Let me ask you the question, and this is, I, I'll proceed this by, I've said several times in this broadcast, I will never skydive, even though I've done this. Would you skydive? No. No. Okay. No. See, I'm not alone. I'm not alone <laughs> in that process. So, did this, won't skydive. Right, but right. Anyway, all right, you can see uh, Chief Arroyo and Chief Cummings are coming down over the edge right now. First yeah. time we believe, that, I, I believe we've ever had two chiefs, and they kind of look like they've done this before. My guess is somewhere in their training they have. Yes, yes. <laughs> We were talking about that up there. They have done, so they have repelled or right. done something like yes. that. Uh, so, and, and actually, I think Chief Arroyo uh, has done this event before. It is Chief Cummings' first time. So uh, a nice job by the two of them coming down here. Actually, he's not a re uh, repeat. No, editor. he's not, but he said he's done other repelling. It, it looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious they have. All right, Faye, we're going to let you go up right. and uh, get settled after your, uh, after your repel. Thank you very much. And, Annette, thank you for being part of this event. And I'm sure it was as big a thrill for you that your friend was able to do that this year what a what a turnaround of events in one year so thank you both for supporting special olympics delaware uh, that was faye adcox and her friend annette messina who uh, landed a short while ago and uh, what a great story for faye one year ago at this time she was in a wheelchair after a near fatal accident and she promised annette that they would go down for a second time if, God willing, she was able to recover from that, and obviously she has. So what a great story there. Chief Arroyo and Chief Cummings have officially landed there, and as we suspected, Jimmy, they've uh, had a little bit of experience coming down. Yeah, and they looked like it, and, uh, and that's good. I'm glad that... Uh people in those positions have that kind of experience. That's you never know what you need to. <laughs> you never know. Uh, Channel 10 is there. I keep saying Action News. They are here also. I yep. want to give a special thanks to Channel 10 for showing up today, too, and uh, being part of this, uh, this event. Uh, you know, it's one of those events that you know, we wondered the first year we did it, Jimmy, not only would it get old for the people that actually are doing it, but, you know, would it get old from a media standpoint and that type of stuff? And the answer to that is a resounding no. Um, yeah. People are interested in what, what people are doing when you go down the side of the building. And as we've said a couple times, one of the neat things about this event is we've got people who are doing it. You know, I don't have the official stats, but if you got them, it might be we've, a third of these folks have done it uh, once, a third have done it more than once, and a third have never done it before. Right. And so I think that is what keeps this event. We talk about continuing to regenerate uh, volunteers and recruit new volunteers to do things, fundraisers, coach, et cetera. Uh, but it's the same thing with 
going over the edge. Uh, and, and we talk about that as a staff often is and whether it's the polar bear plunge, the reindeer run, this event, any of the other events that we've done, we talk about how the important thing is, is we've got to create the next generation of people yep. who are going to go over the edge. And joining us uh, here is Beth Murray. And she's giving me the I'm not good, coming on good the air work. sign, you, you but she is out. coming on the air. It's one of the things when it's a personal friend, I can kind of make people come on the air. <laughs> I won't make the chief of police come on the air if he doesn't want to. But Beth, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, you, lo you, you look Hi, very confident up there. Well, um, I felt good. I was really excited. I can say the best part for me was that I could see my students, and I knew they were down there, and I actually could hear one of them. And they're a big the motivation the for you being part of this event. Not Absolutely. only you don't always you've seen them be part of Special Olympics, but you're with them on a daily basis. Yes. And what you know, tell us a little bit about how you know you're a special education teacher. That's yes. a special profession, and why did you get into it, and why? Do you stay in it? Why do you continue to be motivated to teach the, the, the students who are our Special Olympics athletes? The same answer to both questions, because of the students. I mean, every, every day, they are the highlight of the day. And I get up every day for them, and they keep me coming back. Now, speaking of coming back, is this something you would, I'm not, I don't mean to put you on the spot, and you don't have to say yes. We've had people say no, but is it? It's a type of thing. Do you regret doing it? Absolutely, no regrets. And so it, it's a it's an experience that now you can check off. Absolutely. And, and a great reason to get your husband Struin to do it <laughs> next year. I'll put that out there. Was he out there? He was out there. He was. Okay, I thought he might come in and I'd chat with him too. But uh, I know one kid that's going to be very relieved. Your son Dane. Yes. And I talked about that on the air. How he he wasn't out there. <laughs> he was not. He, he chose to stay in school, but he'll watch you. Uh, this will be posted tomorrow. You'll be able to see it, and he can watch you come down over the edge. And we gave him a shout out, and we talked about how your mother-in-law might be watching over in England yes. as well, yes. and that one of the neat things of this live stream here as you can see Amber getting ready to go over the edge. Uh, Amber Grunau getting ready to head over and uh, she is not a repeat edger and Marianne Evans is going to join her. Marianne Evans is one of the ones who have gone over for the sixth time. So you can catch up to her eventually. Actually, you're not going to catch up to her because she's going to do this event as long as she can. Catch so it. nobody's That's catching up to her. That's great. Uh, but anyway, we, we hope, we're glad you enjoyed the experience. I we, really did. We thank you for doing it. We talked about, you know, your fundraising efforts and how some of the rugby community came together at they the did. last minute. And uh, what a great, great uh, thing that was. And so It was uh, an amazing experience. And your sister's birthday is today. It is. Is she I'm here? Actually, she's not here, okay. but I'm going to be meeting her shortly. Oh, great. Good. Yes. All right. Well, we'll Look let you go. Enjoy it. the rest of the day. You can check this off your bucket list. Right. You can take a big sigh of relief, and then you have time to decide whether you're going to do it or not. <laughs> my goal is to get your husband up there. That to might do be that. my goal as well. And I think uh, talk about we talked about him being the head coach of the University of Delaware rugby team. And my guess is he wouldn't have any if the head coach is putting it out there that I need some money. Probably people are going to rally around them. I bet. So they're a great uh, group. So. <laughs> they are a great group. So. Thanks so much, thank Sean. you, Beth, and thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. All right, Beth Murray, a teacher at the Wallace Wallen School in the Colonial School District, went over the edge for the first time and enjoyed the experience uh, doing it for the kids that she teaches year round. And up there right now, you see Amber Brunow is going over. And Marianne Evans going over. Marianne is on the right. Amber is on the left. Amber has a brother who is a Special Olympics athlete. His name is Andrew Grunau. And she's done the polar bear plunge a couple years ago. Uh, has never done anything uh, cra crazy like this, as she said. She wants to thank her family and friends who supported her, as well as the staff from Brader Elementary School and Gauger Cobbs Middle School, who helped her raise the money to be part of this event, $1,100. If you're just tuning in, this is the Over the Edge event for Special Olympics Delaware. 86 edgers are going to go over the edge by the end of the day. The building you're looking at is 17 stories, 222 feet. It's the 300 Delaware Avenue building. The folks you see there at the bottom cheering people on, and in that case, Amber. Uh, a lot of TD Bank employees down there. They're uh, one of the three sponsors of this event, the Brandywine Realty Trust, the owner of the building being another, and Newcastle County fire service. Marianne there on the right you can tell she's a veteran. She's one of the first people we've seen actually stop midway and wave to the crowd. Actually not midway. She's about a third of the way down. Marianne is a uh, mother of a Special Olympics athlete. As I mentioned this is the sixth year 
that she has done this, so she has done it every single year. I know her goal was to raise a dollar for every Special Olympics athlete, which would be four thousand dollars. I'm not sure how come how close she came to that goal, maybe even surpassed it. Uh, she usually stops by after she uh, goes down, and so we will talk to her. Uh, she has done skydiving. You know my feeling on that, so I won't repeat it. Uh, the tandem skydiving, another tandem skydiver that we can talk to, hopefully. Uh, I want to hear more about what that. She said that was great. Um, my feeling is if you can skydive, this is a little bit easier. But then again, maybe not. I've never skydived. I have done this. And, and, and while I, it wasn't easy, I'm not afraid of heights. And so that makes it a little bit easier. A lot of people, and I'm amazed how many people who are afraid of heights, and in some cases deathly afraid of heights, come out to do this event and a lot of them say they do it because if the Special Olympics athletes can overcome some of the obstacles they overcome to succeed on the athletic fields there's no reason why they can't overcome things uh, overcome their fear of heights and do this for Special Olympics. Uh, Marianne wants to thank everybody uh, who has donated to her goal of one dollar for every Special Olympics athlete. She is continuing to collect money it says here in her bio and so uh, if you're not sure, if, you, if you're watching this event and just because you tuned in or heard about it and you don't have somebody you're actually following or want to contribute to, you can certainly support Special Olympics Delaware. Just go to the website at SODE.org. You can even note on that support that you would like it to go toward uh, Marianne Evans' effort to raise a dollar for every Special Olympics athlete. Uh, Amber, Amber, as I mentioned, would wanted to thank the folks at Brader Elementary and Gauger Cobbs Middle School. Both coming down, Amber on the left, Marianne on the right. There you see the text up top. Uh, looks like they're just watching the next crew. If you're just tuning in and, and waiting for somebody, we still have uh, Tom Bernazeskowski, Scott Pollock, Am uh, Amber Grunau has gone, Kim Bates, uh, Kathy Dickinson, and uh, we are going to be joined here by the two chiefs that went down, uh, Chief Arroyo and Chief Cummings. And you guys can have a seat there, put the headsets on. Here, one of you can go there. And they have landed, and uh, one of the things we pointed out watching you two fly down the side of this building is it probably wasn't the first time either one of you have done something like this. Chief, I'll start with you. First time you've done this event, I, I'm going to say you've probably repelled before. Well, actually, this is my first time. Really? Absolutely. Wow, yes. that's even yes. more impressive. Yes. <laughs> so. it, it was, and it was so what did you think? Uh, I thought it was an excellent opportunity to come down to the side of the building um, for this great fundraising event. Um, I was a little bit scared, yeah. <laughs> being, being the first time. Right. But again, once I got there, it was fine. Do you have it any fear fine. of heights going I do into not. this? No. So no. That makes a little bit. Chief, yes. your first time repelling? Not my first time repelling, but the first time repelling with this type of uh, apparatus. Okay. And this high. Uh, <laughs> never so. went this high before. <laughs> really? So what, what was your what did you think of the event? Uh, I agree with the chief. This was a great uh, opportunity to support Special uh, uh, Olympics. And I've got to tell you, see, I got the, my courage from the chief. I kept looking over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm telling you. We watched it, and uh, the, somebody who was up on the roof with you during the training, Faye, was talking as she was in here and watching all the broadcast here and saying how smooth you guys were going down. So uh, hats off to that. both of you. Chief uh, Cummings, I, I talked a little bit while you were coming down about, you know, you just don't do this as, as because you're the chief of the Wilmington Police Department. You truly believe in the cause. You're involved in the committee. You Absolutely. were in our office the other week helping us stuff packets yes. for stuff like that. And, uh, you know, what is your inspiration to be involved in Special Olympics? Well, again, I believe it's a good cause um, for the athletes um, where they don't get on a, a bigger stage than this. Um, they've had not had the opportunity to some of their life experience. Um, and I've been a runner in the Special Olympic torch run for right. a number of years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it's a worthy cause, so I try to stay involved every year that I can. You're a pilot? Chief Arroyo? I, I was a pilot, medevac pilot with New Jersey State Police for 11 years. And so you've experienced uh, things up in the air <laughs> similar to this. Uh, <laughs> maybe not, you know, as safe as I'm sure you were in that helicopter. You weren't tethered to a building. While you no, exactly. I, I feel a little safer in the, in the helicopter. <laughs> I'm not hanging outside. You, you were in more control with that helicopter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, you've been involved in Special Olympics in a lot of ways. And, you know, what, how did you get and why did you get involved originally? Again, originally, I, uh, like uh, Chief Cummings, I was uh, one of the runners in the mm -hmm. torch run. And that was actually started in New Jersey. Uh, I became the uh, colonel for the Delaware River Bay Authority right. Police. And it was quite an honor that I was uh, uh, asked to be the uh, chairperson for 2016. I think Special Olympics is an outstanding organization. As you look at the Olympians and see the, uh, the smiles on their faces and the opportunities that this uh, organization gives them, it's just uh, 
Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best organization in the country. You can yes. see the big smiles yes. there, the crowd and uh, people landing. That's Amber, who just landed uh, her first time down. Uh, she's not a repeat edger. That is her first time. Jaguars, uh, I'm assuming Appaquinimic. She's a senior at Appaquinimic High School. And, you know, we, we talked about the importance of, you know, the next generation of supporters for Special Olympics. Yes. Uh, you know, the three of us, we're all roughly the same age, and we're not yes. going to be around forever. And so it must be neat for you guys to see younger generations of people get involved in the community in Absolutely. general. You're both in roles where community involvement is a very big part of your jobs. And, you know, yes. what would you say to people? We have a lot of people. We've been we've had more than a thousand people tune into this broadcast already. We've got 300 people listening right now. A lot of them we know are students who have been watching Amber and the yes. Teltex folks. How important is it to become involved in the community, not only here in the city of Wilmington, where you're both intently involved, but in any organization? From, from my pr point of view and perspective, I think there's nothing greater than being able to help someone else, uh, give them opportunities that uh, they cannot always achieve on their own, and they always need somebody um, in a position that are willing to help out. 30th year of the Torch Run. Uh, you both, as you mentioned, were involved in that as runners. I don't think either of you run. Do either of you run anymore right now? Very little. Uh, very <laughs> I'm probably going to do this year's Torch Run. Great, okay. and, and it's the 30th anniversary. Uh, Chief Arroyo, I'll ask you, what's it been like watching that event grow? from where it was when you first became involved to where it is now. Uh, it's outstanding. I think that, again, people are starting to uh, become aware of mm -hmm. the, uh, the good that it does, the organization does for everybody. And, again, as you start to listen to the stories of the Special Olympians and their families, uh, I just don't think, like I've stated before, it's, uh, this is the best organization that uh, I could possibly think of. Well, and the law enforcement statewide, every agency, yes. and to me, that's always one of the one of the neatest things about the law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics. It's every agency. It's all ranks of yes. people, uh, from people in the cadet classes yes. to chiefs of police who have decided that Special Olympics is a worthy cause. And we can't thank you too enough for your support, not only today, but year-round. We hope you had a great time. We thank hope you. to see you back on the side of that building next year. It'll be your second rappel ever. Absolutely. <laughs> Appreciate right. it. Thank Thanks, you. guys. One last yes, thing I'll say thing. is uh, I understand they're bringing back the uh, bike prologue. They are. So I may not do the run, but I'll be involved you can in the bike. bike. Yes, bike. absolutely. Perfect segue. The bike prologue is going to be down at Rehoboth Beach, and that's going to be at the right before the kickoff of the 30th Torch Run on June 8th. So join the Chiefs down there for the bike prologue. We appreciate them stopping by and rappelling down today in support of Special Olympics. As I said, I think it's the first time any chief has ever done it. Certainly we've never had two chiefs do it together. So we've gone from two first-time chiefs going down a building to Marianne Evans, who is just completed her sixth time going over the edge. And, Jimmy, who That's we got Scott. getting ready to come down there? Is that so Scott Pollock? That's Scott Pollock, yep. And we're waiting to get the name for uh, Blue Rope. All right. right so Scott Pollock is going to be on the – He's on the left, yep. correct? Yep, that's the yellow, and the other gentleman is uh, Tom. All right, Tom Bernazikowski I was going to let you handle right. that one. I know Tom. I just need to hear it. We call him Tom Bieske. Marianne, come on in and uh, don the headset there. We'll get you hooked up. So we have Scott Pollock, who is a repeat edger. This is his second year, and we have Tom Bernazikowski doing it for the fifth time. And he tells me he's going to retire mm -hmm. after this year. I think his uh, wife, Ann Gruner, who's the executive director of Special Olympics, might have other plans yes. for him uh, <laughs> rather than retiring from rappelling here. So uh, his inspiration in this order, Special Olympics athletes, his father who recently passed away, his wife, as I mentioned, the executive director, Ann Gruner, of Special Olympics Delaware. He has two children. And as only Tom could do with his dry sense of humor, his crawfish is his fifth and reason. <laughs> uh, why he does Special Olympics Delaware. He said the most uh, risky thing he's ever done. Uh, actually, wonderful and inspiring. He ca crossed out daring or crazy and put wonderful and inspiring was marrying his wife, Ann Bruner, in Haiti. Uh, they both uh, do have done several mission trips, for lack of a better term, over to uh, Haiti to uh, help build a school and also provide medical uh, supplies, medical help to the people of Haiti, and not just one time after the hurricane hit over there, but almost every year since that, sometimes twice a year. So that's Tom Nazikowski on the right, Scott Pollock on the left. He works at the High Road School of Southern Delaware. Their Northern Delaware campus is involved in Special Olympics. This is Scott's second year, uh, and so he, uh, actually he's a High Road special education teacher in Elkton, and it was uh, his students 
who overcame a lot of adversity that gave him the motivation to do that. He's been part of the uh, Spartan race. He does want to skydive. He said it's on his list there. Marianne, let me ask you, have you ever skydived? Yes, I have. You have. Okay. <laughs> Compare it. Uh, what's, what's easier, skydiving or this? Uh. <laughs> or, or are they completely different? See, I, and again, I apologize to the people who have been tuned in the entire time to hear me say again, I will never skydive. Mm. But I always talk about that because I did over the edge. I would mm. do over the edge again. Yeah. I have no interest in skydiving. Well, probably skydiving is worse than this. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you're a lot more dependent on... A, I did tandem. You well, know, I was yeah. Hooked, yeah, how does that work? The, well, you have somebody hooked to your back. I mean, you're... You're just as tight as you can be because they're they're in control of your body. So it's an, so it's not you and your best friend. It's no, you and an no, experienced somebody, person. Yeah, I'm my, still not doing it. Yeah, but, uh, no. that's a <laughs> <laughs> Well, I probably won't ever do it again. But you know, so uh, the the biggest issue I had for two weeks afterwards, my ears were plugged. Really? Yeah, because of the weight, the how fast the plane went up, and then how fast. Oh, okay, you came I'll add that to my so, list yeah. of reasons. I'm yeah, doing yeah. It, so. yeah no. All right, but you've done this now six times. That's right. And you're a parent of a Special Olympics. Talk right. about how Special Olympics has affected not only your son, Lee, or your daughter, she'd be Leanne, but your family as yeah. a whole. Well, I just think Special Olympics is so wonderful. Uh, it just, um, you know, the friendships, the just the camaraderie, everything is just so great. Um, it's always, you know, something going on that we can, my grandchildren are starting to get involved. And, wow. Um, and that that cake by the ocean was the song in memory or in honor of my granddaughter who is isn't old enough to do uh, <laughs> over the edge yet, yet. but uh, yeah I, she will someday I think she did her and um, my other two grandchildren did the plunge with me this year. And that is Scott Pollock, you see, locked up just uh, temporarily there, and he will make his landing. He got a shout out from Ken Pollock. Way to go, Scott Pollock, going over the edge for the second time. Uh, based on the picture I'm seeing on the Twitter account, Ken's probably a brother. Uh, that I see there <laughs> shouting out to his other brother. And, uh, you know, Ken, we'll find out. Maybe you guys should go down together next year. Uh, mm -hmm. So Marianne, a six-timer six -timer for Special Olympics Delaware. Does it ever get old? No. I mean, I know you do it because you yes. support the organization. Yeah. But is there still a thrill six yes. times? Yes. I mean, people uh, have told us the second time they actually enjoy it more yeah. because they're not as scared. Right. But after six times, is it just as thrilling? It is just as thrilling. I was still just as kind of nervous driving here today as I was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, I think it's as much the, you know, excitement yeah. and the thrill. But, um, yeah, because you just think, you know. Until you're here and you right. see it and you're hooked up, I think it's. Uh, and I, I would say last year I met Scott up on the roof and we repelled together. Oh, okay. So it was nice to see him up there oh, that's great. again. I, yeah, I chose. I wanted to come down with Amber this year because she was. Uh, it's her first year. Oh, great! So, yeah, yeah, and she's a senior at Apple High. Right, I think, right, right. According right. to her shirt, there's Tom Bernaskowski. Mm. He's a former board member of Special Olympics Delaware. He's now a nurse practitioner, uh, but he got his start in Special Olympics when. Uh, he worked for the old DuPont Pharmaceuticals, and they ran one of our major events, and he headed up that effort for several years. He actually worked for Special Olympics North America for some years and is now back in Delaware uh, as, and has gone into the medical field. And as we talked about, he's done some amazing things over in Haiti, taking his skills over there. I can tell you he's one of the most generous people you'll ever meet. Uh, he's got a wonderful dry sense of humor, as I mentioned, with uh, crawfish etouffee being the fifth, his fifth inspiration for going over. I'm just glad he put that Go fifth and not ahead of his much. wife, his, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. his, his father who has recently his, passed away yeah. and his children and the yeah. Special Olympics yeah. athletes. So uh, Scott and Tom have successfully landed. Marianne, anybody on the list of your family relatives who are going to go over with you anytime soon? Uh, I don't think any have, right? No. I know your husband's has. not. He no. won't even come to camp. He's yeah. certainly not no, going to go over there. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, you know, he, he says he's not scared of heights, but he. You yeah, know. yeah, of course he's not. He's on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's up. right. That's right. <laughs> but I, I, today I did kind of do, want to do it also in memory of uh, one of our athletes just lost their mom, his mom, this week. Um, Peter Yerger lost his mom, Alma. Peter. Yeah, and um, tonight's her memorial service. And um, great woman, and um, I know she coached, her and her husband coached bocce at one time. So it's a loss to all of us. But um, so kind of a shout out to That's great. For her. No, that is wonderful. Uh, I actually got an email from somebody I uh, talking about Alma. letting us know yeah. that that was yeah. the case. And, yeah. and it always is that, you know, 
it's one of those things when you've been around the organization as long as you and I have. You've been around longer than me, but I've been doing it for 25 plus years. Unfortunately, uh, that stage of life eventually yep. comes to yep. the folks that you've you know been involved with Get over the years, with, yeah. and, and, and so that is the yeah. case. And we've we've even, we've talked about. I was talking to Chief Cummings a minute ago about the importance of the younger generation and how important it is. You talk about your grandchildren yeah. getting involved. Yeah. How important that is that the younger generation understands their responsibility at the next level. Right. And you and right. I both yeah. see that. Yeah. So. So. All right, Mary, and I'm going to let you, I know you got a big crowd of fans out no, there. You always they, do. Or, uh, it, it's old hat did, for them. They didn't come this year. <laughs> they, <laughs> they've seen it. At least my husband made it this year. That's right. They're watching me on the They can watch the live broadcast yeah, so. tomorrow. So, all right. Thank uh, you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mary Ann, and thank you for supporting Special Olympics. Uh, mother, parent, volunteer coach, uh, does the world one of those people, and uh, she, she reached her goal uh, of uh, getting ready. The 3,500, she has reached her goal, uh, and that's what it was, and so we appreciate that. And, uh, Jimmy, it seems we got uh, a rope check, and so we're going to take this opportunity to show you some commercials that we put together for Special Olympics and why you do, or the folks that do this, repel, do it. You're watching the live stream of the 2016 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware, sponsored by TD Bank, Brandywine Realty Trust, and Newcastle County Fire Service. 86 people at the end of the day are going to have gone over the edge to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. 4,000 children and adults taking part in 20 sports year-round. Let's show you where all that money goes. Flame is like no other substance in the world. Because one flame can ignite hundreds, thousands, millions of others, while the original is neither exhausted nor diminished. From the beginning, we have been inspired by a flame. A flame that once lit has been nurtured and shared by all our many founders and by the simple but profound insistence that every individual has a right to dignity, acceptance, and respect. That one flame has grown to become many. Many have become a global phenomenon and passed from hand to hand, they have become a movement. Beacons of hope and humanity around the world. Symbols of triumph and joy everywhere. Now, the flame is ours to carry forward we have gathered to draw from its source, to take our portion back to our regions and countries, to spark a new generation of tolerance, acceptance, and love, to fire new commitments to passion, friendship, and joy, and to ignite a movement and a future. Contact Sport. And when it comes to changing the world, 
there are no better athletes than the athletes of Special Olympics. Every day around the world, Special Olympics athletes come to the playing fields to learn, to grow, to compete, and to win. The Special Olympics Athlete Oath embodies this spirit. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. At Special Olympics, we envision a world where everyone belongs, where bravery triumphs, ability emerges, skills grow, laughter invites. The human spirit is unleashed and the world is changed. One volunteer, one fan, one doctor, one teacher, one athlete at a time. Founded by Eunice Kennedy Shriver in 1968, Special Olympics is led by millions of athletes with intellectual disabilities in more than 170 countries, each embodying the beauty of difference. And Special Olympics athletes compete in over 80,000 competitions a year and World Winter or Summer Games every two years. Special Olympics is an everyday opportunity to make a difference in the world, bringing together people of all abilities to create a world of respect and inclusion. We're a global network of families who share inspiration, hope, and understanding. We're coaches, volunteers, and community builders, reaching out to children and adults who might otherwise be forgotten in some of the most remote parts of the world. And though sports is our engine, Special Olympics is so much more. We're changing the world in many different ways and in many different arenas. We're Special Olympics Healthy Athletes, the world's largest public health organization for people with intellectual disabilities. We're Special Olympics Healthy Communities, changing how governments, businesses, and policymakers address the unmet health needs of adults and children with intellectual disabilities. We're Special Olympics Unified Sports, helping to build relationships and understanding between people with and without intellectual disabilities. We're Special Olympics Young Athletes, unlocking the power of sports for the youngest children, ages 2 to 7, and their families. We're athlete leaders, trained and empowered, demanding respect and leading by example all around the world. Through the power and joy of sports, Special Olympics is revealing the champions in all of us. Come play with us. Together, we will change the world through sport. Welcome back to the live stream broadcast of the 2016 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. What you saw were a couple of commercials about Special Olympics. Why these folks are repelling 17 stories, 222 feet down the 300 Delaware Avenue building to benefit the 4,000 athletes who compete in Special Olympics Delaware year round. Some of the folks who will be coming up in the next, uh, let's say, half an hour, Kathy Dickinson, Kim Bates, Grace Sheeran, Matt Engelman, Dustin Zook, Kim Neely, and this is Daryl Henderson, as you see on the name tag there. Uh, I apologize, we don't have any bio information on Daryl. Um, he seemed to very confident, very comfortable going over the edge right there. Not sure if this is his first time doing this event or not, but he seems very uh, comfortable going down, and so maybe not his first time rappelling down the side of a building so Daryl Anderson he was scheduled to come down at 12:10, so he is 20 minutes ahead of schedule but we do have several people that were scheduled to go uh, long before him including Kathy Dickinson who you see there in the red getting ready to go over the edge and so what happens when they get up there to the top uh, you know people arrive at different times we ask them to be here an hour before their scheduled repel time and inevitably some people are early some people are uh, we'll, we will we'll say fashionably late uh, getting here and so what they the most important thing they try to do is they try to keep the event moving uh, and the main reason for that is we're not in any rush to get out of here or anything like that but at this time of year, as we've experienced here in the state of Delaware, uh, it tends to rain. <laughs> and sometimes that includes thunderstorms. And uh, if it does start drizzling, they will continue to repel. And the professional technicians who do this all the time, they'll make the decision when it is unsafe to continue to repel. Obviously, lightning would shut down the event immediately. But my point being, you never know when weather may come in, and it's supposed to be bad weather tomorrow if that front comes through a little bit earlier. Uh, what we don't want to do is you don't want to wait and send people down at the exact time 
when you can keep the event moving to ensure that you do get it in. And that's the bottom line. The event is scheduled to end by 5 o'clock, and we are on schedule for that ending time. And so uh, that is why there are sometimes people are out of order here. Uh, as, as you see, Kathy Dickinson getting ready to head down. She is an in-house attorney for Wawa Incorporated, which is uh, the sponsor of our other major fundraising event, the Lewis Polar Bear Plunge. Uh, if you were at that, you know Wawa had a, their coffee truck out there, which was a huge hit. Every time I looked over there to go get a cup of coffee, there were 25 people in line uh, giving away coffee to not only the 4,000, nearly 4,000 people who did the plunge, but also the 15 plus thousand spectators who were there. You can see Kathy Dickinson uh, heading down. This is her first plunge, uh, her first rappel, and she is not wasting any time. Daryl Henderson heading down as well. He's uh, scooching right down there as well. Uh, she is uh, Kathy Dickinson in addition to being an in-house attorney for Wawa. She's also been a member of the Special Olympics Delaware Board of Directors for the last couple weeks, a couple months actually, March 2016. So she is one of the newest board members inspired to do so by her involvement with Wawa. And we've talked to people here today uh, on the air live. We've t told stories of people who weren't on the air about how, you know, they, uh, and a perfect example of that is the manager of the 300 Delaware Avenue building or the one-time manager, Larry Maester. I'm not sure of his exact role with Brandywine Realty Trust now. He was the one we approached when we needed to use this building to start this event seven years ago. Uh, you know, a year out of the first event is when we started the planning. Well, Larry, from that experience, has become so inspired by the athletes of Special Olympics that he is now on the board of directors for Special Olympics and is a very active board member. He's not a token board member who just puts it on his resume. He's involved in a lot of different things, including our mission tours, which if you want more information about what a mission tour is, to go to Special Olympics website, SODE.org, and learn about them. They are scheduled throughout the summer. It's a, a one. E it's an evening. It's an hour long. Uh, or they also offer them in the mornings where you can come and learn more about the inspirational stories of Special Olympics. And even if you're out there listening and you think, well, I've been volunteering for Special Olympics for a while, there's uh, no reason for me to go to that. Uh, think again, because trust me, I've been to them, and I've been with Special Olympics for over 27 years, and I am still inspired by that. As Daryl's getting ready to make the landing there on the bottom, a couple tweets here. Sarah Jungling, I just ran into her during the commercials. I ran up to the 10th floor where people prep, and she tweets out, up in the staging area on the 10th floor, over the edge Delaware, so excited. She is the sibling of a Special Olympics athlete, Morgan Jungling. Also, WSDW has tweeted out, join the show, is our Clark Kent, and it's a picture of <laughs> Joe Allen from the Wake Up Crew. Uh, Joe went over the edge this morning, and we had both he and his uh, broadcast partner, Nancy Johnson, of the Wake Up Crew on the uh, air here about half an hour ago, so we appreciate WSDW support. So just to uh, update people on the, and update you really too, at the success that we've had with this over the years, you were right. I did think the number was a lot higher than it was. It was only 1,867 people last year. Okay, and that was after being on the air all day. Right. We're now not even halfway through. <laughs> and I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around it. We're almost at 1,500 now. Wow. So I, I, that's incredible. So, um, you know, really excited to see this grow over time. So. Yeah, that's great. And that's a yeah. shout out to our edgers who got yep. the word out because the only way those of you who have tuned in knew that about Dell it. That Dell Tech 20 minute, 30 minute yeah. theory was a huge, <laughs> that was a huge one. And, and that's, a, you know, we talked about when we decided, first decided to invest in the time to, to put this together, this broadcast, is that that was the potential of it, is yep. that schools oh, yeah. could broadcast it. You know, these schools nowadays, if the kids don't have computers, they got TVs in their room, right. they got the smart boards, and they're able to watch this type of thing. And, yep. and that's how this event grows. And, you know, as we said, and we talked about with Jerry McNesby from Dell Tech, you know, of all those Dell Tech students that watched it today, probably several dozen, if not more than 100, I'm, I'm not even sure how many, somebody from that group is going to go over the edge next year. Right. How can you not be inspired, especially when you're the president of the university, Dr. Brainerd, is going over the edge. Here you're watching Kathy Dickinson, a Special Olympics board member, an attorney for Wawa, one of the major sponsors of the uh, of Special Olympics, uh, primarily the polar bear plunge, getting ready to make her final descent. She said here her other daring or crazy activity was that she hiked eight hours to a boiling lake in the Dominica. What? Boiling lake. I guess 
I guess hiking to the boiling lake is different than hiking in the boiling lake. Correct. <laughs> so, yeah. very interesting. Jimmy, what was the one, the person last year, remember when we talked about the crazy things that did a bungee dump, jump in a cavern or something? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. What it was, was that? Uh, it was like a sinkhole, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's what, what it was. was. A sinkhole. Something that was just crazy. <laughs> so, it was two, did. yeah, like being in or seeing a sinkhole is one thing, but yeah. bungee diving is another thing. You put them together. And, and, and hiking to a boiling lake. Yeah. That's a first. That's yeah. a first in the three years we've been doing that. Kathy wants to thank her family and her generous friends and co-workers at Wawa. Again, if you want to tweet out some support to somebody, if you're on Twitter, please use the hashtag OverTheEdgeDE. Obviously, whoever you're supporting isn't going to hear it live, but this will be posted on the Special Olympics website and kept up there all year. Uh, Jimmy does a great job of splitting this up into three or four different segments, so it's very easy to find the person you're looking for. Uh, I can almost guarantee you every single edger who went over today or will go over will look back and yeah. see the recording of this. Who wouldn't want to see themselves do something like this? And that is when they will have the opportunity to hear your support for them. So tweet it out. Use the hashtag over the edge DE. One of the biggest events are the uh, it's it, it, it's always the hallmark event of the year. Maybe not necessarily the biggest, biggest event we do. It's one of several events we do that are very large and involve almost a thousand athletes. Coming up is the Summer Games on June 10th and 11th at the University of Delaware. If you are interested in volunteering for that, email info at sode.org and we will put you in touch with the right person to get you involved as a volunteer in the Summer Games. Lots of opportunity. Um, you know, we do have a requirement that you be at least 16 years or older, and that is because a lot of the folks that you will be around that day are adults. And so we want to make sure that it is, uh, the volunteers are age appropriate. So if you are 16 or older, need some community service, or maybe just want a volunteer opportunity, uh, that is your opportunity to come out to the Summer Games on June 10th and 11th. The person you are seeing there is Matt Engelman. Uh, Matt is a longtime supporter of Special Olympics. His brother-in-law, uh, Brian Arendel, is a volunteer for Special Olympics. His wife, his sister-in-laws, his in-laws are all longtime uh, family members, volunteers, coaches for Special Olympics. And that is Matt's inspiration for going over the edge. Going next to him is Grace Sheeran getting ready to go over the edge. Uh, Matt, by the way, also, he is an adaptive physical education teacher in the Apoquinnemec School District, and so he uh, is very entrenched into not only the coaching but the teaching of people with disabilities. And so he is a coach. He was a, the flag football coach, if you haven't heard of our efforts with the DIAA, that now uh, flag football and uni I'm sorry, unified flag football and unified track and field are official Delaware Interscholastic Athletic Association events. Um, our track teams in, I think it's 15 different high schools, will take part in the state championships coming up next weekend. And one of the neat things about that is there's three divisions in the state championship track meets, boys, girls, and unified sports. And so wow. it really is amazing. And on those unified sports teams are high school athletes with high school Special Olympics athletes. And so, uh, you know, we call the athletes uh, Special Olympics athletes, and they're with their unified partners. And the, you've, you've heard people who have come on the air, or if you're just tuning in and you haven't heard, but I can tell you, they've talked about the importance of unified sports and what that does for the youth especially. We offer unified sports for all of our events, all age levels, but for the youth especially who get involved in Special Olympics and get exposed and become friends with people with, uh, who are uh, in, in Special Olympics, and not only while they participate, but long after that final buzzer sounds or the final horn blows and they go back to their everyday lives, now you have Special Olympics athletes and unified partners who continue to remain friendships. We got a tweet from Bradley Wolock, would you rappel down this building? As so Special Olympics Dollars annual over the edge happening today. So thank you for one of our guys. Bradley Wolock. I was yeah. gonna say it's a UD yeah. person. Yeah. Pretty neat so that they're doing that. Uh, Jimmy with a great production crew. There you see Matt Engelman getting ready to go over the edge. Jimmy, why don't you talk about your production crew? Give them each a shout-out. They've kind of moved around yeah. a little bit to well, get well, the different uh, angles. Emma and wasn't here earlier. She had to go take a test or turn something in. It's almost that time of the year. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, well, in here now, uh, Nina Raspa is producing, so she's uh, just kind of getting technical with it. She's the one who's ultimately sending this out on the Internet, recording it. 
uh, for to be posted later, putting up the names, so on and so forth. Kind of quality control, if you will, the final stop for everything. Uh, Richie Rasper, her brother, to her right, is directing, picking the shots, picking the angles, talking to the camera operators. And the camera operators right now, the two outside, I believe this is Brad Wolick's angle right now, so he's the one who just tweeted. Uh, he's a senior and been with uh, our program for a while, so he's out there running that camera. The camera right now, this is Katie Snyder that was just up there. Uh, she's been with us for a year, also a senior. And this is Emma Sills, a uh, Delaware um, women's golfer on the varsity team. They want to see a championship this year, but also been with us for a couple years and just got back from class. So she's up top. We immediately thrust her to the top of 17 stories to get us this wonderful angle, which is one of my favorites, uh, to see kind of the preparation and all the security and the safety that goes into this. And then what you ultimately do is that. As again, this is Grace and Matt coming down. Let's say we're about 40% done. Just looking at kind of the cross outs I've made on the names as we've gone. We've gone down. Grace is senior at Middletown. She's the president of the, uh, I'm, I'm saying exactly what the DJ is saying at the same time. She's the president of the school's best buddies chapter. And she's a DFRC blue gold ambassador. In the blue gold football game coming up at Delaware Stadium in a couple weeks. She's a volunteer for young athletes, basketball, track and field, swimming. And previously was a unified partner, or pardon me, uh, previously was with swimming. Uh, she's a unified partner for soccer and track and field. This is her first time. So she's motoring on down. And uh, she's willing to come on and talk to us afterwards. We'll see if she lives up to that. And this is uh, the most daring thing she can account from her Life. We see a couple of looks like Special Olympians assisting there with the ropes. More of a novelty for them. They're just kind of doing it to uh, to participate. And there's another look at Matt and Grace as they come down. Kathy Dickinson, Kim Bates, Dustin Zook, Ian Cassidy. Kim Neely, all kind of on their way, coming up soon. Oh, I, I got to bring you back up. Sorry, sir. <laughs> got a tweet here from Mrs. Fred Weasley. I'm so proud of you for facing your fears. Love you bunches, Mom. And that's to Kim Neely, one of the people you She'll be just coming mentioned up. is coming up. And so as we approach the, uh, we're at noon, high noon. We've been on the air since 845. We're probably, like you said, Jimmy, we're, we're not quite halfway there, but we're yep. getting halfway there. If you're just joining us, this is the live internet stream of the 2016 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. You see Matt Engelman on the left and uh, Grace Sheeran going over the edge for the first time. Matt has gone a couple times, and uh, like you said, it's his second year. So this uh, it is a couple, but this is his second year. Uh, Matt's a longtime coach, and you know he's one of those guys, Jimmy. Uh, you know, Matt's got I think he's, I think it's three kids now, all between the ages of. I think a year and eight or nine years old. Yep. And, and he's one of those guys that his commitment to the program has only gotten bigger. And wow. people might think automatically, well, he must be coaching his brother-in-law yeah. or maybe one of his kids is in Special Olympics. And neither one is the case. And he's just one of those guys. And, you know, he's an adaptive PE teacher, but he could – he could end the day and go home and be done. Yep. And But instead, he coaches the flag football team. He's helped out with the unified track team. Uh, he's got all his kids involved in the school programs. I went to one of his practices the other week, and I can tell you, I left there and I said, you know what? You won one of the best practices I've ever seen. <laughs> and these are elementary age kids. Right. And they're the hardest. You know, that age group is the hardest to run a practice for. And I don't just mean Special Olympics athletes. I mean in general, as, as I've done, uh, I've coached that age group before. And so it was just an incredible thing that he does and his commitment to this organization. Uh, took a personal day off from school today to come do this and uh, raised the $1,100. And, you know, here's a guy who it would be very easy for him to say, you know what, I do enough for Special Olympics. You know, I give all my time. 
time in school, out of school, et cetera, et cetera. And here he is still being a big part of this uh, organization. So our hats off to him. And uh, Grace's cousin Alex is a Special Olympics athlete, as I think you might have mentioned. She's involved in a lot of other organizations that you mentioned that, uh, you know, we're kind of all one big happy family. We all support the same group of people, the same population of people, uh, whether it's in one organization or another. And there's obviously overlap when it comes to volunteers as well as participants yeah. in those groups. So It's, it's so cool to kind of, when, when you're doing this, show a camera angle and you're like, that's this person, this right. person, who's coming down. You know who they are immediately. So yep. I think that's really cool how connected and intertwined this community is that, that you're a part of. And uh, Matt, as I mentioned, an adaptive PE teacher in the Apple School District. One of the schools he serves is Middletown High School, where Grace is uh, a senior and, and involved in all those different organizations. So a nice uh, uh, t job there with the teacher and student coming together. We've seen that a few times over the years. We've got some. We've had teachers who have gone over earlier today. We've got some more coming up, including Kim Bates, uh, who has done this. Uh, this will be her fifth year. So uh, as she says, according to the vest and the three jackets I have, I guess that's <laughs> one way to keep track of that. Uh, those who go over the edge, as we mentioned, they you need to raise $1,100 to do so. And not only do you get the thrill of repelling 17 stories, a couple happy fans there, but you also receive a very nice vest. And it's funny because, uh, you know, we, we always talk about you get that really nice vest and, and what an accomplishment it is to do over the edge. And uh, it's always funny when you see somebody wearing their over the edge vest in the dead of summer <laughs> when it's hot out because they want to show off that they uh, did this event and what an accomplishment it was. So... Uh, that is Kylie Frazier, one of my colleagues. Uh, she'll be thrilled that I gave her a shout-out. Oh, she'll she's find, probably that. Hating this she'll right find that out when she goes back up to the 10th floor. She is actually going over the edge. Uh, each year, one of the staff members does it. You've heard me mention, or if you're just tuning yep. in, I did it last year. And uh, several of our staff have done it. And uh, she is going to be the one to do it this year. And she's had an exciting year, Jimmy, just like uh, you and your wife have welcomed a beautiful young girl into the world. Kylie got married there last year. In fact, she missed last year's event because she was, uh, her wedding was literally the next day. And so we excused her. We thought that she, as organized as she is and as good as what <laughs> she does, that she probably needed to have her attention elsewhere. So uh, Kylie will be coming down. I believe her rappel time is in about two hours. So she's about an hour from getting prepped. What the process is here is you're assigned a rappel time. And for those of you who are thinking about whether you want to do this next year or not, uh, you can get more information about next year's event. It's going to take place on May 11th. It's always the second Thursday in the month of May, similar to our plunge, which is always the first Sunday in February. We've tried to establish and keep a consistent date, and you can get more information right now about that. The more information, meaning we're going to put you on our list and we're going to contact you as soon as the online registration is open. Once that online registration opens, you basically make a $50 deposit to secure your spot, and then you have the rest of the year to raise the additional $1,050. You can get all that information and how to get your name on that list. Just go to SODE.org and click on the Over the Edge banner. Now, the process, once you are here, you're, you set your repel time, and you're allowed to do that once you have raised the $1,100. In other words, as soon as you raise that $1,100, you contact the office, and you say, this is the time I want to go down, and they say, all right, either that's your time or here's the closest we can get to it, depending on what everybody else has done. Then you raise the money, or you've already raised the money at that point, yep. uh, and then you're given that time, and then you're asked to show up here an hour before the event, and once you get here, you check in, you're brought up to the 10th floor where we have an area where you can enjoy some snacks. You can chat with people who have already gone over the edge because they're, they're debriefing up there. Or you start chatting with the people who are going over with you. And sometimes you're a source of comfort if you've done it before. And other times you're the one asking the questions. What is this? What is that? How do we do that? And so either way, it's a very uh, relaxing atmosphere. Up, Well, I say relaxing. It's up on the 10th floor. It's relaxing for some, not so relaxing for others. And then you then, the techs put you through a training right there on the floor. You go through your equipment. You get fitted. And I can tell you, having gone through the process, they give you complete confidence in what they're doing so that it gives you the confidence in what you're about to do, whether it's your first time, second time. You've heard a couple people say, Marianne Evans, who's done it all six years, just said it never gets old. There's always that anxiousness. There's always that thrill. There's always the nervousness until you do get to the bottom floor. Then you go up onto the roof. Uh, you go from the 10th floor up on the roof, which is another seven floors north, 
and then you actually go through an experience where there is a one-story structure up there, and you have the opportunity to repel down the side of that one-story structure. Now, what we've seen so far is everybody has gone over the edge, and when I say that, I mean that first step off the side of the building. They've done it the traditional way that it has been done for the past five years, and that is you get holstered up, there's a structural tripod up there, and you kind of back off the building. And it is at that point that you have, uh, you get that feeling of, okay, I'm going, and there's no turning back. And it's a, I can tell you from experience, it's a thrill, but it's also the most nerve-wracking part because that's the first time, other than when you've been on the roof and you're only up about 30 feet in the air, which, again, is nothing to sneeze at, but it doesn't compare to 17 stories, 222 feet. It's at that point when you've stepped off or you've backed off that you start to feel comfortable. Still nervous, still anxious, but you at least feel like, okay, I, I trust the rope. And that's really what this is all about. You're trusting the rope, you're trusting the system. And that's when I had that first comfort and I could really start to enjoy the experience. This year, they're giving you a second way to do it. And we're halfway through our list or close to it and nobody has taken advantage of that second way. And the second way is instead of backing off the building, you go off facing out. And so while you would start with your back to the building, instead of sitting in your harness, you're still in your harness, but you're not hanging in it, you sit down on the side of the building. And then what they will tell you to do is they will say, put one foot over, now put the other foot over, and now you're facing out. And so instead of backing off the building, you kind of nudge out forward. And a lot of people I've talked to, including Marianne, who has done this, has said, no way, I'm always backing off the building. That's my feeling. I have only done it once, and maybe that's why, because I'm comfortable having successfully done it that way the one time, and maybe that's why I would only do it that way. But talking to Danny Hall, who he's a member of the, uh, he's a captain with the Delaware State Police, uh, longtime supporter of Special Olympics, uh, yesterday he went over the edge. Uh, as part of media day because he couldn't be with us today and he talked about it at the cocktail reception and he went over face out yesterday in fact most of the media people that went over did exactly that they went over face out and Danny Hall who is petrified of heights and he's not one where it gets easier every time he gets just as nervous if not more nervous every single year that he goes over and he told that story yesterday but he also said that he liked the new way of going over the edge, or the other way, I should say, where you are literally face out doing it that way. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see if anyone, my, my guess is most people are going to be like I would be, like Mary Ann was, who have done it once successfully by backing off the edge, are going to do it that way versus nudging yourself face out that way. There you see some Special Olympics athletes and friends uh, enjoying the music of the DJ outside. A very festive atmosphere. You can see how crowded it is out there. You know, I'm going to estimate there's at least 100, maybe 200 people out there dancing, having fun. Uh, we got a little delay here. Might be doing a rope check. We're not sure. Uh, we're waiting for the next folks to get uh, harnessed up and up there on the roof, and uh, we'll continue with the event here. I uh, want to mention again our sponsors of this sixth annual event, TD Bank, Brandywine Realty Trust, Newcastle County Fire Services. TD Bank co-sponsors this event, and they've done, I'm sorry, one of three sponsors since the inception. They hosted the cocktail party for the Edgers and Friends last night, and then today they're hosting this block party that you're seeing outside. Brandywine Realty Trust owns this 300 Delaware Avenue building. The owners and the staff have bent over backwards for this event from the beginning, including the attachment of a permanent support anchor on the roof that is literally cemented in, and that is the safety aspect of this. That is so incredible. And then a second-time sponsor this year, Newcastle County Fire Services. There's 22 fire and rescue companies here in Newcastle County. They've all come together to raise money for their folks to go over the edge for Special Olympics, but they're also involved in the safety aspect of this. And then there's three major supporters, Delaware Law Enforcement for Special Olympics. We talked to Chief Cummings and Chief Arroyo a little bit about that's That's how they got involved in Special Olympics is through the Delaware Law Enforcement for Special Olympics most, uh, specifically the Torch Run. This year the Torch Run is in its celebrating its 30th anniversary 
It's a 160-mile torch run that leads up to Summer Games. It starts in Rehoboth Beach on June 8th with a special ceremony at 7 o'clock down there. And as you heard, Bobby Cummings, Chief Bobby Cummings of the Wilmington Police Department, mentioned that he's going to take part in the bike prologue, something that after 10 year, a 10-year hiatus, uh, as they were repairing the Indian River Inlet Bridge and building a new one, uh, they were not able to do. But it is back, and part of that 17-mile family-friendly ride is the opportunity to bike over the Indian River Inlet Bridge in a very safe atmosphere. So if you're interested in that, go to the Special Olympics website, SODE.org. Also, a special shout-out and thanks to Delmarva Broadcasting Company. They're a year-round partner of Special Olympics. Uh, they have stations all across the state. Uh, WSDW is one of them. They were here with a live remote for the third time that they've done that. The Wake Up Crew, Joe Allen and Nancy Johnson, were here. Joe Allen went over the edge for the second time yesterday during the media day. Dana McDonald, a cool one on 1.3, went over his fourth time. Speaking of a guy who's scared of heights and goes over, he's the one. He, uh, I remember that very first year he went over, he was petrified. And uh, he still gets anxious about it, but he's now, uh, he can brag. He has bragging rights for the Del Marva Broadcasting Company. He has gone over the edge four times more than anybody else. Ashley Reed, Eagle 97.7, went over for the first time, as did Tom Schultz of 97, won the wave. Lauren Holloway of WBOC, DJ McEnany from WDEL. If you haven't seen his video that Amy Cherry, his colleague who went over a couple years ago, did, look for it on the website, WDEL.com. So just a great support by the uh, Delmarva Broadcasting Company. And last but not least, Delaware Rock Gym in Bear. They provide opportunities for the edgers to participate, chance to go uh, see what it's all about before you actually come here to 300 Delaware Avenue building. We're going to take a quick break as they are breaking uh, upstairs, and uh, we're going to let you uh, see the Special Olympics commercials we have produced so you can see where the money it goes, which is going to be more than $100,000 when it's all said and done. Leading into today's event, more than $625,000 has been raised in the five years. This is where that money goes. If human achievement can be determined not by speed or strength, but by character, then it's easy to see who the most amazing athletes really are. Be a fan of dignity, acceptance, and the human race. Volunteer, coach, or compete in Special Olympics. Special Olympics, be a fan. I used to never really talk. Ever. I was scared and shy. It was hard to look at people's faces. Uh, I was afraid if I said something wrong, everyone would laugh at me. But then I started to play golf with Special Olympics. I made friends and won lots of gold medals. But I learned more than just playing golf. Special Olympics helped me to find my voice. And now everyone else is speechless. It was senior year and the whole school was cheering for her. And just seeing the smile on her face, people were crying and people were cheering. Seeing how the whole school came together just for her was the most amazing thing ever. Special Olympics is acceptance. Joy. Respect. It made me feel better about myself, being around thousands of people just cheering me on, and it was a fun experience, trust me. Special Olympics is about life and being accepted by everybody. Special Olympics is health. Education. Sports. It's made me who I am today. It's made me more outgoing. It's made me just more of a genuine person. When I got involved with Special Olympics, it, it kind of like brought me out of my shell. And it's not about disabilities, but it's about celebrating their abilities. When I was in fourth grade, my teacher told me she would never answer my questions because I had too many. And I was too dumb to understand my answers anyways. 
after joining Special Olympics, I know that's not the case. I am just as smart as anyone else. It has helped me a lot to be fearless, you know, in the real world. Special Olympics is community. Special Olympics is friendship. My friends I've made through Special Olympics are the best people I've ever met in my life. It had gave me a chance to meet new people from different states. And you just gain an entire family of new friends. Special Olympics is dignity. Justice. Empowerment. I truly realize that what I'm doing is for a great cause. I could spend all my time just working with Special Olympics and I would love every second of it. It makes you feel like a wonderful person and your life changes forever. I've made a difference. Now it's your turn to make a difference. We are champions together. Making a difference every day. Changing the world is a contact sport. And when it comes to changing the world, there are no better athletes than the athletes of Special Olympics. Every day around the world, Special Olympics athletes come to the playing fields to learn, to grow, to compete, and to win. The Special Olympics Athlete Oath embodies this spirit. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. At Special Olympics, we envision a world where everyone belongs, where bravery triumphs, ability emerges, skills grow, laughter invites. The human spirit is unleashed and the world is changed. One volunteer, one fan, one doctor, one teacher, one athlete at a time. Founded by Eunice Kennedy Shriver in 1968, Special Olympics is led by millions of athletes with intellectual disabilities in more than 170 countries, each embodying the beauty of difference. And Special Olympics athletes compete in over 80,000 competitions a year and World Winter or Summer Games every two years. Special Olympics is an everyday opportunity to make a difference in the world bringing together people of all abilities to create a world of respect and inclusion. We're a global network of families who share inspiration, hope, and understanding. We're coaches, volunteers, and community builders, reaching out to children and adults who might otherwise be forgotten in some of the most remote parts of the world. And though sports is our engine, Special Olympics is so much more. We're changing the world in many different ways and in many different arenas. We're Special Olympics Healthy Athletes, the world's largest public health organization for people with intellectual disabilities. We're Special Olympics Healthy Communities, changing how governments, businesses, and policymakers address the unmet health needs of adults and children with intellectual disabilities. We're Special Olympics Unified Sports, helping to build relationships and understanding between people with and without intellectual disabilities. We're Special Olympics Young Athletes, unlocking the power of sports for the youngest children, ages 2 to 7, and their families. We're athlete leaders, trained and empowered, demanding respect and leading by example all around the world. Through the power and joy of sports, Special Olympics is revealing the champions in all of us. Come play with us. Together, we will change the world through sport. Welcome back to the internet stream of the 2016 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. I'm John Busby along with Jimmy Smith and his production crew here for the third straight year. Ralph Shefferstein has tweeted, go Ted Ryber. Ted is going to be one of the ones going over the edge here. Still to go is that is Kim Bates. That's not Kim, but she's coming up. Kim Neely, Dustin Zook. You scared me there. For Harry a Bright, Ian Cassidy. Sarah Jungling, so a whole list of people coming up this here. This is Harry Bright. And so that is Harry Bright getting ready to head down here over the edge. We had a little bit of a break there. Not sure what they were doing up top, but this is Harry Bright. He's retired, 69 years old. Wow. I'm not sure I'm doing this when I'm 69, but uh, which unfortunately is not that far away from me. <laughs> he says uh, he has worked with the uh, Special Olympics population in the Apoquinimic School District. And he's also involved in the fire service, so he's probably, he is one of the members of the Newcastle County Fire Services, those 22 fire and rescue companies who sponsor this event. You can see he's made that first 
dip over. This is his first time. He's excited to do it, he says, something he's never considered doing previously. Been with the fire services for 53 years. Uh, going into a burning building is crazy. I would say so. Yeah. I would, uh, you know, I would say, and, and God bless our men and women who do yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you can't say enough about that. There are people willing to do that. And he'd like to thank all his friends who helped him out coming down. So Harry Bright scheduled to go over at 12.10. So about 20 minutes behind schedule. But we also have had, for instance, Daryl Henderson, who was scheduled to go at 12.10. Yeah, he landed half an hour ago. So uh, one thing I've experienced over the years is that if they get off kilter a little bit schedule wise they usually end up catching up one way or another so if you're just tuning in uh, this is again the over the edge event there will be 87 people that do this before it's all said and done chip Sim thompson who we mentioned earlier in the broadcast hours ago was uh was not able to make it at the last minute for some reason i have since heard that he may still end up being able to show up and go over. So that would bring our total to 87 people doing this, each raising at least $1,100. Uh, great effort by a lot of people raising $2,000 uh, here and there. If you do raise $2,000, which Tom Bernanzikowski has done, RJ Chandler did, Stacy Dedinus, who is coming up, has done, Mark Austin has done, Phil Hagen did, Marie McIntosh did, Diane Shawver did, and Chris Truino, Special Olympics athlete, who's going over at 130, did. You get actually a personalized video of yourself going over the edge from start to finish. What will be wonderful to, for the folks who don't raise the $2,000 is this stream that we have. And, Jimmy, we were just talking about the number of people watching currently. Yeah, right now 146. Uh, I, I wrote down the magic number from last year, which was 1867. So 1867 individuals at one point tuned in to see their respective friend or family member. Uh, and right now we're at 1692. So that's uh, it, it's safe to say that we're going to set a record for the number yeah. of viewers, and being awesome. that we've got at least four hours left here on the air, and we're almost already at last year. So uh, there you again, you see Harry Bright, a retired, uh, and, he, and he boasts about it, 69 years old, yep. as well he should, uh, going down the side of the building. Probably a good time to mention a good friend of Special Olympics who passed away uh, a, a little bit after, a, a little bit less than a year ago, Winnie Spence, a longtime board member, he actually went over the edge when he was 85 years old. Wow. And uh, what an incredible accomplishment that was. Uh, a man who was missed by all. But uh, this is an event, and we talked about this as a staff, that we will always remember this event from last year because it was the first Special Olympics event, uh, a major event that Winnie was not at, and it was because he was in the hospital at the time. And uh, his wife, Barbara, I know, is uh, here today volunteering. And uh, not only does she miss him, but all of us and anyone who knew Winnie. And I can guarantee you more than half the people that are involved in this event one way or another knew who Winnie Spence was and his contributions to Special Olympics. Most notably, he was noticed, known as the Torch Master. He was the man responsible for keeping that torch lit all 160 miles of the torch run uh, during the leading up to the Summer Games. And uh, affectionately, his grandson has taken that responsibility over cool. from him. And so it is a very cool uh, story there. As you see, Harry Bright, uh, I'm not sure if he's the oldest one. He's certainly the oldest one to come down so far, may end up being the oldest one of the day. But he has officially landed. So I just got it. That's Kim Bates. There she is. Kim Bates is a uh, longtime volunteer. She's the mother of a Special Olympics athlete. Her son, Justin, has been an athlete for 15 years. Kim is another one of those, similar to Mary Ann Evans. Uh, Kim hasn't gone six times. This will be her fifth year going over. And she is one of those people that if you need something done, you need it done right. You need it done uh, in, a, in a short amount of time or as quickly as possible. She will get it done. Uh, most recently, I asked her to coordinate the Young Athletes Program in the MOT Tiger area over the winter, and she eagerly took on the responsibility and just did a phenomenal job. So she is just one of those, uh, you know, one of those gems when it comes yep. to volunteering. And she's going over for Justin. She also teaches at the Leach School. Uh, she has done the over, over the, the the go ape uh, ah. thing, and she's done skydiving. So. Um, I, I, of the three, you know my feeling about skydiving. I've, That's not happening. Uh, John hates skydiving, everybody. <laughs> no, nah, you know, and hate's the wrong word. I've never done it, so how can you hate it? I'm not going to skydive. I'll put it that way. Uh, and, but she's done the Go Ape, which I have yep. done, and I've done the Over the Edge. Yep. And so I would put Over the Edge between skydiving and Go Ape in the terms of uh, difficulty yeah. for fear. So, you know, let's just say I was afraid of heights. 
I certainly wouldn't skydive because I'm not doing it anyway. I'm not sure I would do this. Right. The go eight thing is something I would consider. I have a good friend and neighbor who's who does not like heights at all, will not do this event, would never skydive, but he did the go eight. And he said, you know what? That's about my limit. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so it was something that he did. And uh, that, of course, is out at Lums Pond and, and is a fun experience uh, if you haven't had a chance to do that. She, Kim wants to thank her family and friends for the continued support, both emotionally and financially, as she raised money for this event for the fifth year. You know, you think about that. You know, it's very easy for us to say, Jimmy, that I've done this four years, I've done this five years. And you don't think about the financial impact that that has. Right, you know, here, here is Kim Bates, $5,500. She's raised. For at least. At least. Yep. Right, right, at least. And that's just this one event. She's right. a polar bear, uh, and she does a lot of other things. She does yep. a reindeer run and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, Mary, Mary Ann Evans, done it for six years, raised $3,500 this year alone. Yep. So her total contribution has got to be over $10,000 right. just for this event. So just a phenomenal thing there. Uh, so just a neat thing that uh, this this event has become an annual event and one of what we call the structure events for Special Olympics in terms of fundraising. We got a shout out from Cheryl Dennis, Harry Bright, looking good going over the edge. So Harry, Cheryl Dennis is watching you head over. One of uh, hundreds of people currently watching the broadcast. We're very rapidly uh, or quickly approaching the, setting a record for an all-time number of people watching the broadcast. That's right. So everybody watching, make sure you grab the link at the top of your browser, copy that, and then Post that to your social media. Let your fans, uh, your friends and family, followers know, you know who you're supporting. And um, if it's somebody you feel needs to know, send them an email, shoot them a text, something. And make sure everybody knows about this uh, free broadcast. And uh, the more people watching, the better. And I know that's, uh, for us, that's one of our favorite numbers to look at as it grows. So. Uh, we are about 120 away from breaking our record from last year. I'm going to give a shout-out to my neighbor Sarah Marston and her infant son Adam are watching the broadcast. Cool. And uh, I think she's been watching uh, quite a bit of it throughout the day. And, uh, <laughs> one of those things. So, you know, she's a diehard. Let's put it that way. Good. So, Sarah, thank you for tuning in. And uh, Sarah has four boys. And uh, my guess is at some point, the, maybe not only because they're my neighbors, but they're just generally good people, yeah. they will be unified partners at some point and the unified sports program is something that if you're watching this listening to this and you're looking for a way to get your son or daughter involved in special olympics and they don't qualify to be a special olympics athlete let me tell you from experience with my 24 year old being a unified partner from the time he was eight is just a phenomenal experience uh, for them and, and i guarantee you if they do it during their in their school or in the area it's going to be one of those educational opportunities and i know my son missed several math classes and I'll be the first to admit that might have been why he wanted to do it in the first place. <laughs> but I also guarantee you that he got more out of that, with all due respect to his math teacher that year, than he would have out of any math class. So just a great experience. Yeah, we him. were out there for the um, Unify Track and Unify mm -hmm. Flag Football events. And just seeing the, the high school athletes who play on that varsity team kind of in a different role. I mean, obviously, you know, they were on the team and they wanted to, some of them got a little in, into it and they wanted to play, but, but watching them coach and spend individual one-on-one -on -one time, a lot of people see the Unified Project as a one-sided thing. Right. That's a mutually beneficial thing. Yeah. And you know, we, when we talked to some of the athletes and we heard it, um, you know, from the Unified Partners, what they got out of it, there's nothing better than hearing that soundbite of what, what clicked and what registered with a high school kid who sometimes high school kids get bad raps. Like, right. they don't get it. They haven't figured right. out what the meaning of life is yet. Yeah. And, and seeing them and Delaware leading the, leading the, the charge on this Unify project um, is incredible, and it brings a lot of pride, I think, to the state. Well, and these weren't just, you know, you might automatically think, well, the kids that were probably on that flag football team and the tra Unified track team are the yep. kids who aren't very good, and so they have the time. That wasn't the case. No. Most of the kids that were on the unified flag football team were either all conference or all yeah, state players. Right. <laughs> and what makes that even neater is those are the kids, other kids in the school look up to. Yep. And if they see a kid, and I'll use Brandon Dooley as an example, mm -hmm. three sports, all state and all three sports, father, the head coach, you see Kim Bates waving to the crowd, obviously a confident fifth year repeller there. But, you know, Brandon Dooley, he's going to play football at Shenandoah Valley last year. He could have played at a higher level. He's putting yep. his education first. 
All-State wrestler, All-State football, All-State baseball, father, same thing, three-sport All-State star, yep. William Penn back coaching. Brandon Dooley, he committed his heart to that flag football team, yeah. and that was just so neat to see somebody of his stature because that would be the misperception. Well, it's not the star athletes doing that unified sports no, stuff. It's, it's the ones who barely yep. make the team, and that is not the case, and so that's been a, a very neat thing to see as you see Kim Bates make her final. Descent, she gets a high five. That's her son, Justin, right there. Uh, Justin went through William Penn High School. And uh, I'm not sure if he is, he might be in their uh, adult integration program, but he, and he might have also graduated from that. I'm not sure of his exact age, but uh, he is obviously their information. The Bates family, her husband and their daughter are very involved in Special Olympics. Uh, her daughter is a unified partner, and they were the Special Olympics family of the year a couple of years awesome. ago. So uh, just a very committed family. Again, another person took a personal day off from work today, <laughs> like all these folks probably did. Now, in some jobs, you can come and go as you want or you have that flex time or whatever. But I know Kim is a teacher, and uh, she took a personal day, as Beth Murray did, as it's uh, Carol Percy earlier today, uh, several teachers. Uh, there is her husband. His name escapes me. I apologize, but uh, a very, very involved family in Special Olympics. John, look Delaware. at this crowd. I, I mean, I don't often go out. We really just kind of see what the cameras show us. This is hopping yeah, down here sure right now. Is. It sure is. And it, I was just outside and starting at 1 o'clock. It's free hot dogs and pretzels oh. for anybody that wants one. I tried to snag one early. They wouldn't let me. And uh, But so anyway, they have that opportunity uh, to come festive. If you're watching this in your office building, as I guarantee yeah. some of you are, I'm yeah. not going to put it on the same level as NCAA March Madness where you have to have the boss button. But my guess is there are people here who are watching this event at your office building near the $300 Avenue building. Come on down and see what it's all about. Even if you don't know somebody going over the edge, some of the ones coming up here are going to be Kim Neely, Dustin Zook, Harry Bright. Uh, actually, Harry just went over. There's Kim right there. And there's Kim getting ready to go over. Kim Neely. She works for Savage Services. And their company was looking for an opportunity to give back to the community in a positive way. And so they thought helping Special Olympics would be a great way. She is a first-time edger. Extremely, she used the word, afraid of heights. Oh. So, uh, you know. Look at her. She, oh, that was a deep breath. You <laughs> missed it. And it said it's an opportunity for her to face her fear. Oh, and she says she was not necessarily inspired, but challenged to do this. Yep. Uh, mainly Mark Nunley, who is one of her colleagues, challenged her to do this. Oof. She has done zip lining with a team, but that's not as exciting. And we talked about that. That that I, I put zip lining on the ranking, skydiving, this, and zip lining, which is what that part of what that go ape yeah. thing is. Uh, zip lining, I would put in between now. The zip lining I've done has been very minimal, uh, right. and I haven't done probably what some people would call real zip lining, uh, or and maybe it would. Everybody's going to have an opinion that. about what's real. Like some people say, this isn't real repelling because it's only 17 stories. <laughs> no, it, it is. Yeah. It's real repelling. Uh, so that's uh, yeah, and the people that say that they're not the ones repelling. I guarantee. You. No, it, <laughs> I'm going to wait till it's 100 stories. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> right. That's not silly. here in Wilmington. Uh, so Kim Neely wanted to mention everyone uh, that's helped her out with the fundraising, but just to keep it quick, as she said, and we appreciate that, she wanted to thank Dustin Zook for volunteering with me so I don't have to go alone. So that means Dustin, yep, he's due. Dustin, yep. There he is right there. So Dustin Zook going over with her. Uh, all the people who are supporting her, she wanted to thank her girls, Chelsea and Ashton, and her larger supporters, Troy and Cindy Reed, Mark and Ann Nunley, and Tommy Voke Lander. So... Kim Neely, who is going to be heading down with her colleague. And going down with her, Mr. Zook, heading down. And if you're just tuning in, uh, coming up shortly will be Ian Cassidy, Sarah Jungling, sister of a Special Olympics athlete, Heather Jones-Hartman, Christy Tillman, Nikki Burnett, all coming up here shortly. Dustin also, as I mentioned, works for Savage Services, and he wants to push himself well beyond his comfort zone. Well, this is going to do it. If yeah. you're comfortable, this is certainly going to take care of this. And he said he, uh, he was excited to help raise money to help the uh, Special Olympics athletes. He has so, uh, Here's another thing I'm never doing. Flown in a hot air balloon. Yeah, I, yeah, nah. <laughs> no. I, I, uh, no. 
I'm not sure if I skydive no. before I would do that or not. I, I, I don't know. But no, anyway. I just think, uh, no. Now, I, I, I have a, my college roommate does it every year. Hot air balloons? Every, hot air balloons. Takes his family up, does all that. I see him go by my house. My kids want to do it. I told my wife that's something I'd love. I think they it should be a mother-son bonding safe experience. They or, like, not aggressive because right. it's a balloon. Right. But it, yeah. Nah. It's, yeah. <laughs> but like skydiving, there's plenty of people that do it, yeah. plenty of organizations that do it right. Absolutely. But that's uh, the reason we talk about that is it's the first time that that's come up today, that somebody yep. has been in a hot air balloon. Dustin Zook and colleague Kim Neely heading down. We're hitting about the four-hour mark, so we're, we almost, we're almost done. Yeah, well, yeah. or, we're or almost, almost halfway. halfway. <laughs> <laughs> and we do uh, Is the glass half empty? Yeah, or half, half full. If you're just tuning in, this is the live stream of the 2016 Over the Edge event, the Benefit Special Olympics Delaware. I'm John Busby, a staff member with Special Olympics, and joining me on the broadcast is the producer of this event, Jimmy Smith, who does all the wonderful digital media work at the University of Delaware for their athletic department. They were actually nominated for an Emmy this past year, and uh, a lot of his students have gone on to do wonderful things. Uh, one in particular, Nina Raspa, has the wonderful opportunity of working for you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I can hand her the headset and yeah, yeah, ask let her if that's get how that it is. Opinion from her, right? Use the word wonderful. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's they, smart they, enough not to shake her head no <laughs> when her boss is sitting next I'm, to her. I'm looking. I'm giving her that's the right. opportunity <laughs> to shake uh, by not looking. But. but Nina, I think she has done this all three years yep. that she's been part of this. Yep. Once as a student and twice as a, as a full-time employee. Yep of the University of Delaware. But even if you're not a sports fan, you got to check out bluehens.com. Everything you see digitally done there, Jimmy and his crew have put together, and it is just a uh, wonderful thing. It's always entertaining. I actually forward all your stuff to my father, who is, yeah. he doesn't know what a blue hen is. He doesn't know how many That's quarters okay. there are in a football That's game right. or innings there are in a baseball game, but he does enjoy watching Good. your stuff. Cool. They, uh, Thank you, you know, sir. It is uh, a lot of fun what awesome. you do, and my kids love it, too. My, my seven- and nine-year-old are big blue hen fans, Good. football and basketball in particular. Uh, and they love the stuff that you put together. The fun, especially the fun stuff. Yeah, a lot know, of fun stuff from stuff. football <laughs> this uh, this spring. So um, our 15 players of spring feature series, you know, asking the players some funny questions that have nothing to do with football. No, some that they do. Love it. Yeah, um, are fun, and those have been a, those have been a big hit. Barnett Harris is one of their all time favorites. Bar <laughs> Barnett Harris is one of Barnett Harris's all time favorites too. He was in the office yesterday complaining about how he's not on enough. So <laughs> he's fun. It's funny watching him walk across the parking lot. I met you yesterday out yep, front yep. by chance. I was bringing the parking passes yep. up, and as soon as you went up and I turned it around, he was he walking was right across there. the parking lot, and I, you just have to laugh. He's, no, he, he is funny to watch walk across the parking he is, lot. <laughs> so. He is a 6'9", 130-pound <laughs> basketball player. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, we got a tweet, Tara. Uh, uh, Rahe, R-A-H-E. Yeah, sure. Uh, close enough. Over the edge, Delaware. Way to go, Kim Bates and Lori Abelman. So a shout-out for Perfect. two people. If you want to tweet, please use the hashtag over the edge DE. I've got it up on my Twitter feed, and we, we will say it, whether we say it exactly when they're coming down. It depends on whether we have a guest on or not. But the nice thing about this is I guarantee you all 87 people who are repelling over the edge are going to watch this broadcast uh, taped. It'll be right. It's being recorded and will be on the air tomorrow. In fact, Jimmy, to ensure that it's recorded, he's got a backup recording system. I've got going. three, 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 three going, going. Three going now here. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a, I, I posted a couple of pictures to my uh, Twitter feed and Facebook and to show you the operations room here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six computers going. Uh, I've got my normal, uh, I call it my note board with a bunch of things yep. going on. We've got all kinds of equipment in here. And uh, needless to say, this is uh, quite a production that Jimmy and his crew Yeah, this is have the same together. production we do for basketball or any of the other sports we broadcast. So yeah, uh, quite very, a, very cool. But it, but it's impressive. To, to you guys, it, it looks simplistic. It's, it's, it's the same. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing. And, and I get I've done this now three years, and, yep. and I do some broadcasting as well, but nothing like this. And every time I walk into this room and see what the effort that goes in uh, to this, I am continued to be amazed. This is a live internet stream of the 2016 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. In its five years, 441 people have gone over the edge to raise $625,000 for Special Olympics. Those folks have included athletes, coaches, parents, friends, volunteers of the organization. Today we had two chiefs go over, yep. Chief Arroyo of the Delaware River and Bay Authority Police Department, that's a mouthful, and Chief Bobby Cummings of the Wilmington Police Department. We've had firefighters go over. Uh, we've had celebrities go over, radio personalities, media people. Rocky Bluewinkle went over a couple years ago really? in costume. 
uh, he went over, uh, and I believe it was Dave Arthur who was in that costume. Not I believe, I know it was, who is on really? staff now at the University That's of Delaware. That's a fun story. In fact, I was joking with him. Uh, not joking. I told him, look, Dave, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you ought to do it again and not, not do it in the costume. It's probably a whole different experience. Uh, you know, hats off to him for doing in a costume. Yeah, <laughs> I right. can't imagine that. Uh, but anyway, so we've, uh, you know, we've run the gamut with people. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the late Winnie Spence did it when I believe, he, I know he was in his mid-80s, whether he was 85 or not, he was in his mid-80s, and he did it. He may have done it twice, but I, I, I know he did do it once. And uh, uh, just, uh, you know, a, a wonderful event. You do have to be 18 years old to do this event, in case you're watching this and wondering. So you do have to be 18. You do have to weigh at least 100 pounds. And you cannot weigh more than 300 pounds for safety reasons. So you can either use that as an excuse to put on some weight or some excuse to lose some weight if you feel like doing Over the Edge. Uh, North, over the Edge, North America, they're based in, they're headquartered in Canada. Uh, they bring their techs into these events, uh, and we combine that with some experienced uh, rock wall people, uh, some edgers, repellers. Edger, by the way, is the, the fancy term for somebody who is doing the repelling. It uh, doesn't clear spell check. I've had, to, I've had to adjust my computer to accept it so that it doesn't come up in red every time I write it on a press release or something like that. What you're looking at is the festive atmosphere outside. TD Bank has their branch here, and they not only hosted last night's cocktail reception, but they're hosting this festival today, part of that being games, prizes, the DJ, the music. Uh, they're going to be giving away free hot dogs and soft pretzels starting at 1 o'clock, uh, which is about 15 minutes away. And just a festive atmosphere outside right now. And, and this is, uh, we talk about how this event has grown. And this, what you're looking at, is a perfect example. I guarantee you six years ago, at this time of day, this shot would have had a smattering of people. Yeah. And you would have questioned whether, you know, other than seeing the banners and that kind of stuff, you would have questioned whether there was even an event going on. Right. And you can't, you, it's obvious that there is an event going on when you go out there. And it's just a fun atmosphere out there. And we are... We are blessed with good weather because even though they would continue to repel if it was drizzling, obviously if a storm blew through here or something like that, they would put the event on hold. And so for that reason, we are very happy that it seems like this is going to be the only day in what seems like the past two weeks where it hasn't rained at some point. Even yesterday on media day at the very end, those of you downstate got torrential rain, but up here in Wilmington it was drizzling. I was doing a television interview in a drizzle toward the end of it, but fortunately everybody had landed by then, so there wasn't even a question of what we would do. And so uh, we are blessed with the good weather as you look at Ian Cassidy getting ready to go over the edge. Ian Cassidy is heading over, and he's scheduled uh, to, to go down here in just a couple minutes, and it looks like he, like the others, we talked about the two ways you can go down this year, backside first or front side out first, and uh, we have seen nobody go front First. Yesterday, yeah, everybody really. went front first. Really? Yeah. The media it, people. The media people. Well, huh. from what I understand, they let, yesterday they weren't given a choice for whatever reason. Oh. And, and none of them minded. It was funny because Dana McDonald, who I mentioned from Cool 101.3, he went over for the fourth time. Somebody scared of heights. God bless right. his soul. They, they want to make sure their radio station's represented. Uh, and I think, you know, I think he kind of likes it now. I yeah. think he's gotten to that point where he uh, does enjoy it and enjoys it a little more each time. But anyway, he, he went over front out face yeah. out and uh, as we talked about basically what that you would be in the position that you see Ian in only you'd be sitting on the side you wouldn't be kind of he's kind of right. leaned over now he's ready to go so instead of looking at the glass the entire time you look out well you look out to start and then you could and turn, you around, turn around, around and you turn around I guess you could always be looking out right yeah you could right exactly but you can see he is at that point of I call it the point of no return obviously you could yeah. still get out of it if you wanted to they would just pull you back up but uh, he is over where you feel confident, and I say this as an experienced edger. You feel confident about what you're doing. You feel confident that the rope system, you can see his left hand, and we'll take the time to explain what he is doing. He is gently pulling with his left hand, and the harder he pulls, the faster he goes. You see that little jerk there, sort of, uh, when he pulled down. And he locked up. I did the same thing three or four times right away. And what that does is if you start going too fast, it locks up immediately. And it tends to lock up even more when you're first starting because unless you've done this before, and even if you have done it, you're just not quite sure how much you want to pull back on that handle. So right. uh, that's what exactly what is happening there with him. And you can see it's a very, very smooth transition. And he is going to be joined up there 
uh, by someone else who's going to go down yeah, with we him. We don't have We're a name yet. Yeah, I'm to looking get at the that name. name I'll let tag. Jimmy look for that, and I'll tell you that Mrs. Fred Weasley has sent out a tweet. You go, Mom. You and Dustin did amazing, and me and Chelsea are so proud of you. I love you, and that is to Kim Neely and Dustin Zook, the colleagues from Savage Services who landed just a few minutes ago. So thank you, Mrs. Fred Weasley, and everybody who has sent out a tweet. So it's entertaining for us to see them and, of course, share them, and they will be thrilled when they watch the recording of this tomorrow or whenever that you shout it out to them. That was Mrs. Fred Weasley. Again, if you're going to send us a tweet, please use hashtag over the edge. DE. We've probably gotten about 30 tweets today. It's been kind of neat. As we mentioned, we're approaching an all-time record of views. We actually just well, hit that all-time record. Just hit it. And what's the number? 1867. 1867 people. So, so we, one more and we have a new record. All right. And uh, so we are there and we're keeping our fingers crossed here in the production it's gonna room. Happen in like it's going to happen any second. second we, so. we, we need our streamer cannons. We're famous for that for <laughs> Special Olympics to go <laughs> off. And, there it is. And actually there it is. We have now passed the last year's record of views at 1868 people and we are halfway through our broadcast now. So it will be interesting to see uh, hey, maybe we ought to shoot for 4,000 views, one for every Special Olympics athlete. I think that's... Why not? I mean, that's a... We're halfway. We're almost at 2,000. doable thing. So share the, uh, share the link out. And again, we're not really not trying to do that just for numbers. Uh, numbers, as much as we like the numbers, the most important thing is the number of people that become aware of this event and how wonderful it is. And it looks like up here is Heather yeah, Jones sorry, Hartman. That. No, that's okay. I can see your name tag. Heather Jones Hartman. So Ian Cassidy is on the way. Uh, he is the director of education at the High Road School of Delaware. I've actually met with Ian, and they've got a special Olympics team that's doing soccer this Thursday at the University of Delaware. We've got two soccer events this week, one at Poly Tech on Tuesday, one at the University of Delaware. There's Ian, you see, making his way down about halfway on Thursday at the University of Delaware. Uh, in total, we've had, we will have had four soccer events at schools, Sussex Tech, Polytech, St. Andrews, and the University of Delaware. More than 1,500 students involved in skills events and five-on-five -five unified competition. He's a first-time edger, Ian. He says, as I get older, I realize that I get more scared of things, <laughs> such as this. But I know that once I'm up there and get going, I'll be fine. He's looking forward to the challenge of overcoming that initial fear and going over the edge. He's not afraid of roller coasters. There is no roller coaster that I will not ride. But besides that, he says, I'm 36, so I will keep it at that and repelling off 17-story 17 17 buildings, of course. He wants to thank all of his family back on Long Island, New York, and in Florida for their support. Uh, his High Road family, which are the best of the best, their support means the world to me, and, of course, my students who are here to see me go over the edge. You can hear the cheers in the background there as Ian Cassidy makes his final descent. So one of several teachers who went over the edge today uh, cheering on. And that's one of the neat things that's happened over the years. When a teacher does go over the edge, the schools do everything they can to get people there to cheer them on. We've seen principals go over. Drew Moffitt, the principal of Gunning Bedford School, went over for two years in a row. Uh, his school came out and cheered him on. We've seen counselors. Drew's wife, Levita Moffitt from William Penn, went over. We've seen teachers go over. Uh, and so it's just a really neat thing, the mix of people that go over. And again, we enjoy the fact that the people back in school who aren't able to get here are able to see it live on the internet as you see Heather Jones Hartman coming down. She's in the General Health Care Resources. Uh, that's who she works with. She's a former athlete, not a Special Olympics athlete, a former athlete. She has no affiliation to Special Olympics. So one of those neat stories where she just decided she wanted to go over the edge. I've wanted to help fundraise in one fashion or another. I've thought about participating in the Polar Bear Plunge, but haven't been able to do it yet. So thank you to Heather Jones for choosing Special Olympics. Again, one of these people just wants to get back to the community, and we're blessed that she is doing it for Special Olympics. She's a first-timer, terrified of heights. First time we've used that word, terrified of heights, and I'm looking forward to facing her fear and yeah. overcoming. That's an extreme word. <laughs> it is. I saw my friend do it last year and knew that I had to do it also, and uh, she's doing it in honor of a young man with Down syndrome that she used to babysit as a teenager. She's an adrenaline junkie. She's gone zip lining, white water rafting, and skydiving. First time white water rafting's come up. Jimmy, ever done it? Never, never. I've, uh, would you do it? Uh, yeah, I would do that. I think I would do that. Yeah. I, why, I don't know what it is with me in water. <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. You're going to scuba stuff. dive somewhere. I, I would. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I don't have a plan. We, we went white water rafting as a staff when we were down at a conference in Charlotte. Now, you tell me whether this counts or not. We were in a boat. Yeah. 
We had a guide, like everybody does. Yeah. We weren't, how's it best to say, we weren't in the woods. We were in an Olympic training center. And you're, by, the, by your reaction, yeah. I can tell that doesn't you count. You were in a controlled scenario <laughs> where there were bears. You're not, uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, no so bears, no snakes. Were there bears yeah. No alligators. Snakes, then they weren't white <laughs> It right doesn't right count. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll tell my colleagues that that's your opinion. I, yeah, I'm going to keep absolutely. to the fact that I've been white water rafting, and it, and it was a thrilling experience. It's, it's a wet experience, yeah. no matter where you do it. It uh, is. You, you can't you can't do that and not get wet. So, but it but it was a fun time. Yeah. Heather Jones wants to thank her families and friends who have contributed uh, for a first time or terrified of heights. She's not doing too bad. And she even took yeah. where she you just saw her wave. I uh, believe that's floor? at the tenth yeah. floor. Yeah. And uh, we we've tried to figure out over the years how we can mark those windows, but you can tell with the glare. In fact, there is a sign in there so the edgers can see them when they pass that tenth floor. But Short of uh, painting an X on the side of the building, which I, you know, as, as giving as Brandywine Realty Trust is, <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna they're gonna draw the line with us painting a target on the tenth floor there. Vicky Timmons has tweeted, "Go Sarah Jungling." Sarah is scheduled to come yeah, up. She, she should be coming yep. up anytime soon. She, of course, is the sister of Morgan Jungling, a Special Olympics athlete. As you see, Heather Jones Hartman making her uh, science final, getting getting toward the end there. She has locked up, and again, what the lock up is is if you start going too fast, uh, it's a safety measure. It locks you up, and there she's getting over that last lip where the people at the bottom, the rope handlers, pull you out, so you don't have to navigate. And I can tell you, Jimmy, having done this, this was a nice thing. Uh, you know, it looks very simple just going over that last edge, but yeah. I was never more glad that basically they lifted me over that ledge. They pull right. out, so all you have to do is keep lowering yourself. You don't have to navigate that last ledge there. Otherwise, uh, you'd have to kick off the building. And, 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 yeah, and who and knows? And time your yeah. descent. And that's when I would get hurt. 16 right. floors down, one to go, and i get hurt. So that is a, uh, a nice thing they do at the end there. We got so, Sarah Jungling coming up. All right, so Sarah is coming up. Vicki Timmons, as I mentioned, has tweeted. Again, if you're going to send us messages you would like us to broadcast, please use the hashtag over the edge, D-E. And there is Sarah Jungling getting ready to go. And her older sister Morgan, as I mentioned, is a Special Olympics athlete. Sarah has volunteered for the Alpine Skiing Program, the Summer Games and Fall Games. We've talked about Unified Partners. She has been a Unified Partner for more than 10 years. One of the great things about the Unified Program is it's an opportunity for siblings to team up together when they may not be able to play on the same Little League team or the same right. youth sports soccer team for whatever reason, but they can be teammates in Special Olympics, and that is a neat thing for any parent to, uh, to see and, of course, any set of siblings to experience. So Sarah Jungling going down. She's doing it again. She has done it before. This is her second year. She had a great time last year. All the athletes are her inspiration. Now, speaking of hot air balloons, she's been part of a hot air crew, balloon crew, from getting the balloon into the air to navigating for the vehicle that chases the balloon. There's a lot of, well, the balloon seems to be heading north, and the fifth <laughs> road kind of goes north, so turn here. That brings GPS to a whole new appreciation. I've always wanted to develop an app, thinking I could be a quick, rich, get a rich, quick thing. A hot air balloon app? A hot air balloon app, maybe the navigation of that. Instead of a GPS, it's here's how you get to the hot air balloon, wherever it is, if you're one of those sure. chasers. She's also been rock climbing <laughs> since she was in third grade or so. Now, we talked earlier on, and we'll repeat it because we know we have a whole new audience of our almost 2,000 people that have tuned in, that uh, rock climbing is similar to this. But depending on whether... Now, I've been rock climbing at the Carpenter Sports Building on the University of Delaware campus in a very controlled atmosphere uh, on a rock wall, basically. But it's a great time. It's a great experience. I'm not sure I can count that. Unlike where I do count the white water raft thing, even though it was controlled, I'm counting that whether you want the me to or wall? not. I'm not sure I can count the rock wall as rock climbing. Really? I just not. I, well, I mean, like, you, you, when it, yeah, because like when you're rock climbing, you're by yourself and there's no belayers or. Yeah, I'm never doing that. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Like where you're but climbing, I'm, you have to put <laughs> right. a stake in the rock. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's my vision, and, yeah. and you know it goes like back to the it goes back to the Wiley e. Coyote thing. Every time he. Rock climbed, he Something. fell. Yeah. <laughs> just and, don't do and whatever. And he lived through he a lot did. of stuff. Right, he, he lived did. through a lot of stuff. I'm just not confident that I could survive. Also, a, fall. a cartoon, so there's that, that. That's a good point. Good point. <laughs> but anyway, so we also discussed how safe this event is yeah, compared right. to rock climbing. Um, 
uh, and again, at the Delaware Rock Gym, one of the supporters of this, I'm sure it's as safe as over the edge. Yep. Uh, but if you're out in the open and you've got somebody belaying up top with you, you hope their foot doesn't slip out from underneath of them. You're not, yeah, you're right. not bolted to a steel structure like these folks yeah, are. You are doing your own thing. There's nobody else that's kind of doing it for you. No. you know, so you're on your own as we see our but that, but, but you're on your own in a good way. The, the trust of another right. person isn't kind of on the line. It's like golf. You can't blame anybody no, else. No. You can't blame anybody else. You can yell at the club, though. <laughs> so anyway, Sarah, she didn't mention whether she actually goes in this hot air balloon or not. So I have that question for her as we just discussed. Uh, hot air balloon riding is something that you'll never see. You never have to worry about whether it's Jimmy or I up in that hot air nope. balloon if you see it go by your house. I enjoy them. Just uh, oh, I tell you, when they, they go cool. by my house once right. in a while, I'm not sure where they come from. I live on 896 near right. Lums Pond, and my kids go crazy. Yeah. They love it. And you, i got to admit, I watch it the whole way. We live where my family lives in Ohio, um, the Goodyear Blimp, you know, Akron and Cleveland. It's, it's right. very commonly in that area because Akron, the headquarters uh, of a lot of the major tire companies. And so... Um, we'll see the blimp leave and go wherever it's going right. to go or come back or whatever. So it's pretty cool to see that occasionally. So, um, yeah, those are amazing machines. Yeah, so. you, you never it, – it's like a fighter jet. Yep. Well, let's face it. Every time a plane goes over my house, I look up. It right. doesn't and, matter and, what it is. And in Delaware, too, you see a lot of the cargo, you know, C-130 giant stuff coming out of Dover or – you know, I live near the airport in Newcastle, so right. there's a lot of landings Activity. and things like that. Right. But it's still really cool. Yeah. This is Christy Tillman. Okay, Christy Tillman getting ready to go over the edge. Sarah Jungling is more than halfway down for her second rappel. She, Sarah wanted to thank the USS Alistair for their support, Newark United Methodist Church for helping her spread the word about the fundraiser, her professors, especially Carla Guerron Montero, who sent out a flyer for her fundraiser to the entire UD Anthropology Department. So I'm wow. going to go out on a limb and say that Sarah is majoring in anthropology, yeah. or at least interested in it, at the University of Delaware. And then also her mom, dad, and a Morgan. And again, Sarah, Vicki Timmons has given you a shout-out just saying go, Sarah awesome. Jungling. So as we get ready to watch Christy Tillman go down, she is a customer service manager at Walmart in Camden and the office manager for Bouncer Boys LLC in Magnolia. So a Kent County person. We talk about this. You know, you can't do this event anywhere but in Newcastle right. County. There's no way around that. I think the largest structure south of the canal is Dover Speedway. I'm trying to think yeah, if there's yeah. anything, if you're at the top of Dover Speedway, you're as high as it gets. Uh, maybe the sands. Maybe the Atl No, I don't even think. No, the Atlantic sands can't so. be as tall as the Dover Speedway. But anyway. Maybe the water towers in Rome. Yeah, you're right. And that's not a building. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyway, Sarah Jungling, uh, or not Sarah, I'm sorry, Christy Tillman comes from downstate. Yep. Uh, this is a, an upstate event. It's always going to be. Uh, there's no way around it. And that's kind of nice that we have the Polar Bear Plunge in Sussex County yep. to counter you know, our two largest events, one upstate, one downstate. And so, uh, but it's, it's amazing to me the number of downstate people. Uh, it was, this whole event was kicked off. After, well, Joe Allen lives in Kent County, yep. WSDW. Imagine that commute every morning at 3.15 oh, yeah. to get on the air. He says that's what time. He wakes up at 3.15, out the door at 3.30. I said, yeah, I experienced that this morning. No way I was hanging around and no making way. any noise to wake anybody up. No. So anyway, but uh, Kent County, Sussex County, Marie McIntosh, who was second this morning, and her friend, Carolyn, I believe was her name. Uh, anyway, coming, uh, Diane Schrauber, excuse me, uh, from Sussex County. And so it's just great. WBOC, my former broadcast partner, Matt Pensick, when Lauren Holloway went over yesterday, Matt Pensick included it on his broadcast last night. And so it's just getting the word out. And that's why we're saying, you know, we love the numbers. We love that we've already surpassed the number of people watching this broadcast compared to last year. But what's more important is thank you for helping us get the word out about this Over the Edge event and the wonderful fundraiser that it is. Raises over $100,000 every single year. It'll raise another $100,000 this year. That's going to bring our total in six years to well over $725,000. Dollars. 87 people are going over the edge today. Tell you a little bit about Christy Tillman. She's the parent of Tyler Tillman, who participates in our Kent Wildcat program. You see Sarah Jungley there. She went down with a GoPro on. Always interesting yep. to see people do that. So uh, Tyler, Tyler Tillman, his mother Christy, going down. It's the first time repelling. She says, I don't know how scary it'll be. Well, she knows now. She's on her way. <laughs> uh, I know I'll be able to better answer this once the rappel is over. Uh, she's looking forward to the thrill of the descent. She loves roller coasters. She loves, uh, always says she loves heights. Now, there's something you don't often hear people say. Uh, you, you know, you'll hear them say they're not scared of heights, like me, not scared of heights. But I don't love heights. Uh, I don't like going on my roof at home. In fact, I avoid it whenever I can. 
but I'm not scared of heights. I don't consider myself scared of heights because I could go on the roof without a problem if I wanted to. I just intentionally avoid it. But Christy says her biggest thrill she's going to get from this is the fact she's helped raise money for a wonderful organization that has helped her son and uncountable others strive to meet their personal goals through sports and other events. She obviously is her inspiration. Uh, Tyler is obviously her inspiration, inspires me daily, and it's just one way to show him and others how inspirational they really are. What other crazy activities? She did the polar bear plunge this year for the first time, and after that fact, she determined she was crazy. That water was so cold. <laughs> she wants to mention the journey over the edge would not be possible without her husband Mike's paracord's bracelets. Without my husband Mike's paracord bracelets. So it's not Mike Paracord. It's her husband Mike's paracord bracelets that he made and donated to sell for the worthy cause. You know, we, a lot of people think $1,100 is a lot of money. Yeah. I'm not downplaying it is. You can see Christy there. She looks like she's about halfway down. Uh, but we find people don't have a problem raising the $1,100. They do it in various ways. It might just be, you know, we have some people I know, and I'm not going to mention their names, who just write us a check yeah, for $1,100. Right. I have other people who raise money the old-fashioned way, $5 here, $10 there. And we have other people that do actual fundraisers themselves. Right. They'll get a restaurant for a night or do something like that. Yeah. And uh, this is an example of uh, what Christy did is her husband makes these bracelets, and she sold them with all money going towards Special Olympics, which, which is very generous of their family because, obviously, you don't make those bracelets for free. So it's right, costing right. them money in addition to the $1,100 that they raised. So Christy Tillman getting ready to uh, make her final descent there. She's got a few more steps to go before she gets to the ledge. For a first-timer, she's moving right along. You don't often see the first-timers bounce away from the wall. Uh, I know I was a little timid of doing that. And uh, she's really going now. They're going to pull her. There's that last pull you can see. That was a great camera angle where you could literally see her get pulled away from the wall, and so she just needs to float down for that final time there. So Christy Tillman has landed. So we're getting uh, real close to being caught up. We had a, about a 10-minute lull. We're not really sure why. They also do rope checks throughout the day, and so that might have been part of it. But uh, anyway, we are getting close to being back on schedule here. Coming up is going to be Nikki Burnett, Melissa Renzi, Ted River, and Severance, Mark Austin. Not necessarily in that order, but if you just tuned in and you're waiting for those folks, they are on their way. Nikki Burnett, Melissa Renzi, Ted River, and Severance, and Mark Austin. So that was just uh, Christy Tillman that has landed. And we are, I've got two pages of names here, and we are almost done with page one. So we are almost halfway through. Uh, the event here, and we are thrilled that you have decided to join us. This is the broadcast of the 2016 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. John Busby, a staff member with Special Olympics, along with Jimmy Smith, who is our production crew chief here. Uh, I've, I've made up three different titles for him since we came on the air. The bottom line is the reason, the reason what you're seeing is doing what it's doing is because of Jimmy Smith. I believe this is Ted River yep, coming Ted down. River. Uh, Ted is, I, I know Ted personally, his wife is very involved in healthy athletes. Uh, they are both members of the Lions Clubs and are part of the Opening Eyes program at our Summer Games. Uh, if you're not familiar, the Summer Games, by the way, June 10th and 11th. If you're interested in volunteering, visit uh, or email info at sode.org. A great event. It's kind of the anchor event of everything we do. It's how Special Olympics started. In fact, a lot of people have the misconception it's the only event we offer uh, from a sports standpoint, and that certainly is not the case. We do more than 50 sports events during the year. But uh, Hyman River and Company, it's a floor and window covering company uh, that I assume Ted and his wife own. And as I mentioned, he's a member of the Lions Club. They are big supporters of Special Olympics. This is his fourth time. And why are you going over the edge again, we asked him. It's to hear the Special Olympics who have completed the Communicate with Confidence course. And what he's referring to is last night one of our athletes, Phil Saxon, spoke at, he's one of our Hall of Fame athletes, spoke at the banquet that TD Bank hosted, or cocktail reception, I should say. It wasn't really a banquet. It was a cocktail reception for the Edgers and their families. And uh, Ted and his wife, Ann, always come to that, even though this is the fourth time they've done this. So they're not there to hear about all the ins and outs of what it takes to repel. Right. They literally go for the atmosphere and to hear the athletes speak. And we have a different speaker every year. Last year it was Chris Truino, who went over the edge last year for the first time and is going over for the second time this year. Yesterday it was Phil Saxon, Hall of Famer, a uh, long time. I believe Phil 63. He's been involved in Special Olympics for more than 20 years. And so that is Ted River going over the edge. He's done drag racing. He's bungee jumped, scuba dived, parachuted, 
drove at the Charlotte Motor Speedway driving school. We put in parentheses. It's not on the NASCAR circuit, at least not yet. And competed in the East Coast Enduro Association dirt bikes for 27 years. So that he has done. He was in wow. dirt bike racing for 27 years. So scuba diving, we've talked about. You would you would do it. You've I done would you've dive. done the. Uh, I've snorkeled. Snorkeled, yep. which stresses me out just so thinking about it. It's basic. Uh, par parachuted. Uh, we talked about the, neither one of us is ever doing that. Uh, bungee jumped. I didn't ask you if you would bungee jump. I, I would not bungee jump. You would not. Okay. I, I'm 50-50. I, I think I would do it if the right person asked and for the right organization. And I'm not sure I would write a check for $1,100 to bungee jump like I would to do over the edge. But... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, the Motor Speedway, I have done the NASCAR experience. Uh, my, my boys and my wife bought me that for my birthday one time, and I got to go about six laps at 200 miles an hour around Dover Downs. Cool. And I have a whole new appreciation for driving on I-95 at uh, 65. I never go over the speed limit. But uh, driving on there compared to 200 miles an hour, whizzing around that. Uh, one other mention, uh, Ted's idol is Barbara Spence as well as the late Winnie Spence, who I mentioned uh, probably about 15 minutes ago in the broadcast. Winnie passed away at about this time last year. In fact, uh, was not at this event, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you know the Spences and you know uh, Winnie, they don't miss events, and he missed this because he was in the hospital at the time and unfortunately passed away a few weeks later. Uh, Barbara is here with us today volunteering, and uh, so we just want to make sure that uh, let her know that Ted is thinking of her and Winnie on what has to be a very emotional day for Barter. So Ted Ryber there, you can see he is uh, leaned over a little bit more than we've seen other people, but we have seen over the years. Almost parallel. We've seen people come down parallel in that situation, and again, that is another one of the great things about this event. You can see he's in a situation where there's no way he could get out of that harness, even if he wanted to. And so that, again, makes this one of the safest things you can possibly do. Ralph Schieferstein, or maybe it's Schieferstein, or maybe it's Schieferstein. Ralph, I apologize. I don't have the pronunciation of your last name. But either way, Teddy's giving you a shout-out. Yay, Ted Ryber. That's Ralph Schieferstein. I'm going to go with that. Uh, shouting Sounds out good. for Ted Ryber. Again, if you want to send us a tweet, we'll get it out on the air. Please use hashtag over the edge. DE, and we'll make sure that we get it on the air so that when these folks watch the replay of this, that they will be able to hear that you were thinking of them as they went over. This is Les Warwick coming down on the blue rope. Les Warwick. I met Les last night. Les is a member of the Newcastle Fire Services, one of the three sponsors, TD Bank and Brandywine Realty Trust being the other of this over the event. He's never done this before. He wants to accomplish the feat and raise awareness for those uh, Special Olympics athletes and others with special needs. His inspiration is the challenge and making a difference. This is his 50th year as a volunteer firefighter. And we mentioned when somebody, you know, one of their challenges in life is racing into burning buildings yep. and pulling people out. We can't say enough how much we appreciate these. You know, and I don't want to get in deep into this. You know, we want to keep this as positive as thing. But you don't really appreciate what volunteer firefighters do until you see them in action yeah. or you talk to somebody who has had to see them in action. Yeah, and um, you don't ever want to. No. And <laughs> so, you know, the, really the, the thing with the volunteer firefighters, you hope that they never do anything. No, exactly. And I know that's not what, not that they want to, but obviously they, they've signed up and yep. are willing to. and. It's such an interesting dynamic of a, of a position or a, a yeah. something you put yourself into is to be on call for a fire in your community as a volunteer. And, you know, and you're never off duty. No. I mean, yeah, the volunteers are never off duty. You know, I always think of the Flintstone episodes. And again, this is not <laughs> to make light of it, where yeah. they used to intentionally put the fire, you know, ring the fire bell. So that uh, everybody could, all the men in town back then, you know, in the Flintstone era, it was only men that would rush to the firehouse and they'd play cards and do stuff like that. But you are never off duty as a volunteer firefighter. And uh, my colleague, uh, husband, is a full-time paid, paid firefighter yeah. down in Maryland where they have paid firefighters. And I, I don't know whether they do here in Wilmington or not. I, I'm not sure, and I'm not going to try to guess if somebody knows and wants to send me a, a message and I can clarify that. But anyway... He does shifts where he basically works for three days straight or three days and two nights, and then he's off for three days and two nights. And so uh, even though he's being paid to do that, the sacrifice, forget the sacrifice, don't forget about it, but, you know, let's 
not talk about the sacrifice he would make if he ever had to go into the burning building and pull somebody out and what that is. But, you know, the sacrifice you make away from your family uh, for extended periods of times when you're doing that full time, it's, you know, similar to somebody who's in the armed services. You're, yep. you're away. And so Les Warwick is one of those guys, 50 years as a volunteer firefighter. Uh, the list of things he's done, he served in capacities on, as president, not just member, president of the Delaware Valley Fire Chief Association, president of the Newcastle County Fire Chiefs Association, president of the Eastern Division of the International Fire Chiefs Association, president of the Delaware State Fire Chiefs Association. There he is, Les Warwick. He also serves on the 5th District Representative of the Newcastle County Fire and Ambulance Advisory Board. So, and again, these are all volunteer roles. He's yeah, not right. paid for any of this no. stuff that he's doing. But well he, respected in, in, in all that community in that world. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable what they do, and they're a big part of this event, and it, it was exciting when they came on board as a sponsor. Their, their members either repel or they support the people that repel or they're involved as volunteers. It's what makes this event as safe as it is. A high five there probably from a fellow. That is a, a fellow firefighter there uh, who went over last night, and his name escapes me. He's with the Newcastle County Police Department. I'll get his notes out and give him a shout-out. Uh, Rich, I know, is his first name, and he's been a longtime supporter of Special Olympics, a firefighter, and with uh, he's on the Law Enforcement Torch Run Committee. Les wanted to thank all his supporters, the Fire Service News, Tom and Marsha McCoy, Brian Warwick, Sandy Warwick, Kenny and Joyce Pyle, Bobby Merrill, Mickey Decino, Deb and Jim Watson, Kimberly Orth, CFP, Ted Loudon, and Bernie and Steve Blevins for him going over the edge. His first time going over the edge, but again, as a firefighter, he's certainly been on plenty of ladders, plenty of roofs, yep. unfortunately, uh, in addition to training and that type of thing. So uh, he uh, certainly... Came down and came down for a great cause, and we appreciate the support of all the firefighters uh, in Special Olympics, whether it's today or for Special Olympics or uh, in other times of the year in several events that we do. A plunge, uh, the polar bear plunge, is a, is a big event where yep. we have a lot of volunteer fire people. Who we have coming over now? Ann Severance is on that yellow rope. You see her right there, and working on the name for the blue rope. But uh, it's either Steve Kaysen or... Uh, Connor Freeman, I'm going to guess, All right, yeah, based I can, on the time. I can tell you it's not Steve Kaysen because okay. there's a special story that's going to come with Steve Kaysen, and I'm going to wait and tell it when it happens. Okay. And you'll understand why. I, not that it's – well, it is kind I of actually, a secret. So I actually see what you're talking you know. about. It's on my notes. Ah, there you go. So we so will uh, let our listening audience uh, – we won't talk about it on the air. We will wait and then go from there. But here coming down is Ann Severance. And I don't have any biographical information on her, so we uh, will just watch her descend and appreciate the fact that she is coming down here. Let's see if she's a repeat edger. I do have that information somewhere here in my notes. She's the production manager and floral designer of Ramon's Flowers, and she is a first-year edger. So coming down for the first time, she's kind of inching her way along there. Making her way down. Very cool. And again, if you want to send a message out to somebody, tweet it to us. Use hashtag over the edge DE. Governor Marketplace LL. Connor, we are all watching and waiting for you to go over the edge. And they must be talking about Connor Freeman. Yep. We're proud of you at Government Marketplace. So, Connor, you're getting a shout out from the Governor, governor Marketplace. Government Marketplace, and my guess is that has something to do with maybe Connor's employment. Connor, looking at the list, he's a couple people away from going. And if you're just tuning in to the live stream of the 2016 Over the Edge event, Nikki Burnett, Melissa Renzi, Ted River. Uh, Ted is actually gone. He has landed. Ann Severance is on her way down. Mark Austin. This is actually Mark Austin going here Mark on the Mark Austin road. going down as we speak. He works for Logan Generating Plant. It's his second year, and he's looking forward to the opportunity to meet the athletes and the fellow edgers. That's another one of the great things. Uh, Marianne Evans mentioned that. Most of you probably were not tuned in when she was on, that it was fun for her to see somebody she saw last year, the person she actually went down with last year, and I forget who it was, Scott, I think it's who it was. I can't last name escapes me. But that person she was with up in the prep room. Yeah. And so it was neat. You know, here you meet him one time doing – 
something pretty significant. You know, that's one of the things you think about the people who you only meet once that you'll remember. I'd probably remember the person I went down with yeah, at, a, at is, an event like this. This is one of those moments that will implant in, in your head, and yeah. then you'll just memories and people. And uh, so Mark Austin, he was a Marine which prepared me for marriage and parenthood with an exclamation point. And again, Jimmy, you're now into the world of, you've been in the world of marriage, you're now in the world of parenthood. Yes. Lila, uh, two months old? Uh, getting close? Getting close, yeah. It'll be, we're about six weeks right now, so six we're getting weeks. close. It'll be the 30th, it'll be two months. All right, so you're uh, joining the, the land of being a parent. Let me tell yeah. you, there's, there's nothing like it. And uh, you'll get the gray hair like I have. That's, yeah. that's what's caused my gray hair. I blame my children for that. But uh, anyway, so Mark Austin, a Marine, at one point wants to thank his cool. family and friends at Logan Generating and Richards, Layton, and Finger. It's a firm of some sort. So he's making his second. That's Mark right there. That's Mark. 364 days from now, we'll be doing this all over again. That's right. If you're interested, register today at SODE.org. If you think you can do this, do it. Click on the Over the Edge banner for registration in 2016 on May 11th in 2017. And those of you that are wondering what the process is here as you see the successful landing of Melissa. No, that's not Melissa. Ann Renzi. Severance. Sorry, Ann Severance. Thank you. Uh, she has landed. Not sure. Uh, no, it is her first time. We did confirm that, that this is her first time. Going over the edge, smile on her face. Maybe we'll try to get Ann in here and talk to her. Yeah, we, nobody's about her been coming experience. in. I don't think they love us very much. We, we had a lot of people this morning. Yeah, we and did. And a lot of good people, and yeah. it was fun. Uh, but, yeah, we, we like when people stop by and talk about their experience. Maybe next time Corinne comes in, uh, Corinne Plummer is uh, doing the excellent job yeah. of uh, getting us the information we need to make the broadcast as successful as we can make it on our end with who's doing what and when they're doing it. We'll see if she can grab a couple people and bring them in that we – want to talk to and some people just don't want to talk they don't like you know they hear live stream and they get nervous yep <laughs> and as you and i have both experienced and uh, on other broadcasts you turn a red light on and put a microphone on and all of a sudden those people that can't shut up all of a sudden get quiet <laughs> yeah i deal with that often with, with student athletes so it's, uh, it's a <laughs> lot of yes and no like, answers yes absolutely <laughs> so mark austin uh looks like he's probably about halfway down again still to come nikki burnett Melissa Renzi, Louise Doe, Connor Freeman, Steve Kaysen, Stacy Dedinus, and then Chris Trono, the first of two Special Olympics athletes who will go over. Chris went over last year, was the lead, uh, all-time best fundraiser of that year, the top fundraiser, I should say, not all-time, the top fundraiser of that year. And there, Ann Severance, that must be her husband uh, in the bullpen area there, the landing area. Uh, based on the hugs and the kisses there. And he has been, I'm not sure his first name, but he has been a volunteer at this event from the very start. And so uh, it is volunteers that make this event like any Special Olympics event. There are paid texts from the over-the-edge staff that are here. But a lot of the people you see that you are with are volunteers, and that includes our Special Olympics athletes. We have a core group of uh, athletes coming in and out throughout the day, and their job is to meet and greet the people and reaffirm why they are doing what they're doing, which is repelling 17 stories, 222 feet, down the $300 Avenue building here in the city of Wilmington, Delaware. This is one of the largest buildings. It's not the largest building, but it's one of the larger buildings in the city, and we're very thankful that Brandywine Realty Trust turned this building over to us for the day, and actually a couple days. We set up yesterday. We're here today. We'll be taking stuff down tomorrow. And, the you know, one of the neat things is the outpouring of support from the people in the building who, you know, I rode up with a couple people in the elevator each day who would say, you know, thanks for what you do because I had a Special Olympics shirt on. And, you know, even though what I do is a very small part of anything that happens, it's, you know, the grassroots, it's a, it's a volunteer-run organization. It's just neat that, you know, when you work in a building like this that's literally disrupted for three days, that you do it right. and you do it happily with a smile on your face, come to work because you know it's supporting a great cause. Mark Austin has officially landed, and he looks like a former Marine. <laughs> I might tandem skydive with him. No, I wouldn't. Think, yeah, no, I was going to say, I, <laughs> I don't really know. But if I was going to do it, right. he looks like he certainly would hang he on know. to me would, for oh, yeah, dear life. For sure. I, I'm not sure I'd have to worry about myself. Big smile on his face. Again, doing it for the first time. 
and we hope to see him back again. We do have a lot of uh, a lot of repeats. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say just roughly a third of the people of the 87 that did it this year or will do it are brand new. Yeah. A third are doing it for the second time, and a third are doing it for the third, fourth, fifth, or and fourth.